Hey guys welcome to my channel today we are going to be going to do what if the asshole pirates continued part 1 make sure to like and subscribe it helps and it means the world to me also join the discord disclaimer. There may be mature content and maybe 18 plus content and I don't own this story with that stuff out of the way let's begin chapter 1. And so the adventure begins. Ages. Base. Sabu 10. Luffy 7. You would think that you'd be able to hit the target and not yourself by now. Ace called to Luffy from where he sat. He sat on a branch beside Sabo, both watching as their youngest brother practiced his aim on a tree, a large one at that, and still managed to miss. It's not my fault. It's hard. If you had rubber arms you wouldn't be able to hit the target either. Luffy whined, pouting as he rubbed his face. If it were me I wouldn't have eaten such a boring fruit in the first place. I would eat something much cooler. Ace replies with a grin, his arms crossed as he teased the youngest. My fruit is cool. Luffy shouts indignantly, his hands closing into fists at his sides. Alright you two, calm down. Sabo says with a sigh, helping to defuse the situation before the two got into a full-blown fight. It wouldn't be the first time. He started at Luffy mumbles, crossing his arms. Sabo shakes his head as he and Ace jump down from their tree branch. And you fell for it. I swear, can't you two just get along? Sabo asks in slight desperation. Ace scoffs. When he stops being a crabby. The freckled boy says, riling Luffy up once more. I'm not a crabby. He shouts, Sabo groaning as he walked in between the two who were nearly butting heads. He pushed them apart, all three of them sending glares at someone, Ace to Luffy, Luffy to Ace, and Sabo to Ace and Luffy. Now now, why don't we spar for a bit? Sabo asked, immediately refocusing the bickering children's attention onto him. Smiles lit up their faces at the thought, though Ace's was more of a smirk. Yeah. Luffy cheered, the three heading to their usual spot for sparring. As the boys walked they were unaware of the three people following them, having docked at the shore early that morning, on a mission to find three infamously strong brats in the woods. The men following the children grinned sadistically as they followed their targets, watching the smallest settle down by a chalkboard and the older two getting into battle stances. Why don't we nab him now? One man asked, his black hair littered with grey, showing that the man wasn't as youthful as he once had been. Because, you idiot, they're about to tire themselves out and make it easier for us to jet him. The one with fiery red hair exclaimed in exasperation. And then we can get off this godforsaken island and get paid. The last one, the one with bleach blonde hair, said with a grimace, remembering the unnaturally large animals in this forest. Exactly. All we have to do now is be patient. The second man, redhead, said, grinning once more. It wasn't much longer until the three boys filled their sparring quota for the day, the three laying on the grass and looking through the tree's canopies to see the sky. It was peaceful, calm, and serene, but was swiftly interrupted by the sounds of something, someone, jumping out of the trees and advancing on the boys. Whoa! Luffy exclaimed in surprise as Ace and Sabo sprung up into action, pipes in hand. Luffy followed suit after getting over his amazement at seeing three men appear out of nowhere from the tree surrounding them. Who the hell are you bastards? Ace asked, not recognizing the three from the Great Terminal. That boy, is none of your business. Now, we can do this the easy way, or the hard way. It's your choice. The supposed leader, Redhead, said calmly. The three men slowly began advancing towards the kids, and Ace's glare hardened as he and Sabo tensed, ready to fight. Doing things the hard way is hard. Luffy said, his brows furrowed in confusion. Why would you want to something the hard way? That would be annoying. See, we're all in agreement, now come with us and no one gets hurt. The leader said. Who would be stupid enough to do that? Ace shouted, running up to the man and swinging his pipe, hitting the man's legs with enough force to knock him to the ground with a new sound leaving him. Ace grinned triumphantly, spinning his pipe in his hand and stopping it on the ground. Oh, you've done it now brat. The leader shouted, jumping back to his feet. The effect was immediate as the other two men jumped in as well, the one with black hair attacking Sabo, and the blonde fighting Luffy. When it was obvious that the kids were outmatched Sabo sent a worried glance towards Ace. Ace, we should run. Sabo shouted, to which Ace glared back. Never. I don't run away from a fight. Ace shouted. Sabo glared back. Yeah, and it'll get you killed one day. Sabo shouted back. The two's attention was pulled to Luffy when the boy made a noise of pain. Upon inspection it was obvious what happened, the blonde had pulled out a knife and had grazed Luffy's arm, making it harder for him to use his pipe. Ace. Sabo shouted, turning his attention back to Ace. Ace's glare hardened and he went silent, focusing back on the red head who was grinning in preemptive triumph. Ace, we have to run. Sabo shouted, emphasizing every word, only to growl in frustration when he was promptly ignored. With a huff of annoyance Sabo pulled his attention to his opponent, hitting him in the head with enough force to stun him momentarily. Using this as his opportunity he rushed over to Luffy who was quickly losing his battle, and sprung up behind the blonde fighting him, swinging his pole down and stunning him as well. Luffy, run to Dayton's, get help. Sabo shouted, Luffy watching with confusion, apprehension on his face. 
He couldn't just leave his brothers here alone. He had to help. Go. Sabo shouted, louder than he'd ever heard him shout before. This shocked Luffy enough that his eyes widened and he almost robotically nodded, spinning and rushing off into the forest surrounding them, headed towards Dayton. The leader of the men, having seen this, growled, anger blossoming onto his face. Go after him. He shouted to the one with black hair who was just recovering from Sabo's hit. He nodded, running after Luffy while Sabo turned to the blonde, hitting him a few extra times on the head, to make sure he stayed down before he turned to the leader, taking his stance beside Ace. The eldest brother looked at Sabo from the corner of his eye and smirked, Sabo shaking his head, eyes narrowed. You such an idiot. Sabo exclaimed as he jumped towards Redhead. Ace glared, scowling. I'm not. He shouted, jumping after Sabo, both of their pipes raised and ready to continue fighting. Both of you brats are idiots who are going to regret choosing the hard way. Red had exclaimed in fury, getting ready to defend against the attacks. Meanwhile Luffy was running as fast as his little legs allowed him to. He had the advantage of knowing the forest like the back of his hand, allowing him to take shortcuts and run around trees and jumps over roots with practiced ease, while his pursuer was having trouble keeping up. Tripping on set roots and running into those trees Luffy passed with ease. Almost there, almost there. Luffy repeated to himself, like a mentor, as he ran through. He could practically hear the bandits from there, practically see their hut behind the trees. A smile spread on his face as he took a deep breath, preparing his lungs. The ADA and Luffy's shout was so loud that the birds in the surrounding trees flew away, and a black-haired man had to pause to hold his ears, only to recover and rush forward in fury, grabbing Luffy by his scruff and lifting him into the air. You damn brat! He shouted, turning and carrying Luffy over his shoulder as he ran back to the others. Luffy felt the terror begin to fill him after he realized that he had just been captured. What was going to happen? Ace and Sabo would save him, right? They always did. Or maybe even dating, she had to have heard his shout. He made sure he had been extra loud so that, even if she was sleeping, she would have heard him. The straw hat wearing boy was carried through the forest swiftly, the man carrying him worried over the fact that people might be coming now, thanks to the loud mouthed child. Soon enough he was back at the others. The blonde one was up again, and Ace and Sabo were being tied up by the leader. We gotta go, this one called for someone and I'm pretty sure they're on their way. Black hair said, throwing Luffy to the ground, Ace and Sabo shouting in protest, though not able to do much seeing as their hands and feet were bound. Well in that case we don't have any time to waste. Everyone grab a kid, let's go. The leader ordered, grabbing Ace. Sabo and Luffy were unceremoniously picked up again, and the men ran through the forest quickly, making their way down the mountain and to the shore where there was a small boat waiting. The brothers were carried on board quickly and dropped in the middle of the deck as the three men split up. The leader disappeared into a room while the other two were busy unfurling the sails and raising the anchor, preparing the boat to leave. Luffy, come here. Sabo whispered urgently. Seeing as the men had been rushed they hadn't tied Luffy up, leaving the boy free. Luffy shuffled over to Sabo quickly, a scooting closer as well, so he could hear what was happening. Luffy, try to untie my hands, if you do I can get my feet untied. Sabo whispered, a nodding his agreement. Luffy nodded quickly, moving behind Sabo to untie him, tongue sticking out in concentration as he tried to pull the knot apart. Was it just him or was this knot getting tighter? Undeterred Luffy tried harder, Ace and Sabo watching to make sure they weren't caught. Luffy continued pulling and unraveling and, probably due to a miracle, the knot unraveled away, freeing Sabo's hands. Good job Lou. Now untie Ace. Sabo said, already getting to work on untying his feet. Luffy nodded, a feeling of pride swelling inside him from the praise and being able to help his brothers. He moved over to Ace and began pulling at the knot again, trying to move as fast as he could. He was almost done, he just knew it, but before he could finish the door opened, and the leader walked out along with one other guy, this one with silver hair and eyes. And what do we have here? Silver hair asked just as Luffy untangled Ace's knot, Sabo doing the same to his own binds as well, standing in a defensive pose, while Ace quickly worked at untying his feet. Who are you? Sabo asked in a calculating tone, eyes narrowing. Ace practically ripped the ropes off and stood beside Sabo, Luffy in between the two. Me? No one you brats need to concern yourselves with. Put them away and get us on course to the damn island. The sooner these brats are gone the better. Silver Eyes said to the Red Hat who nodded. Yes sir. Red Hat said, indicating that the Silver Eyed Man was the boss of this whole thing. Let's go brats. Red Hat said, shoving the three to a door behind them, much to Ace and Sabo's protests. Luffy merely watched in confusion and slight fear, understanding that, whatever was happening, it wasn't good. Hey. Let us go. Are you listening to me? Ace shouted furiously, doing his best to kick and punch at the red-headed man who had grabbed his arm. Sabo's arm was also in the red-headed man's grip, as he also tried his best to get out of the hold, but he was having much the same luck as Ace. Luffy was grabbed by the black-haired man before he even had the thought of running or helping Ace and Sabo. Now stay quiet. Red Hat shouted as all three boys were thrown into a dark room the size of a closet. 
Al Shoyes was cut off by the door slamming in his face before he could run out, leaving him glaring in the darkness. The only light in the room came from the crack under the door, and barely illuminated the boys' faces. Once night hit, the room would be pitch black. They scrambled, crossing his arms and turning to Sabo and Luffy. Bastards. He growled out. Sabo ignored his temperamental brother and instead started looking around for anything that could help him get out, running a hand through his short hair. In the middle of their capture his hat had flown off, and he hadn't gotten a chance to get it back. Briefly, he noticed Luffy still had his though, and was thankful for that small miracle. If Luffy had lost his straw hat he would have been inconsolable, and they already had enough problems on their plate. Anyone know why those guys took us in the first place? Sabo asked. He could see his brothers shaking their heads in the dim light inside. They don't look familiar. Maybe we stole from them. Sabo asked, though the last question was more of a thought that he accidentally said out loud, still brainstorming as to why they would have been captured. I think I would have remembered stealing from those ugly mugs. Ace said with a glare as he pointed behind him to the door. I don't think I stole from them. Net Sabo, do you think they didn't hurt me? I made sure to yell extra loud. Luffy asked innocently, hoping that their sort akin to caregiver would come to rescue them. I'm sure she did, after all, Ace and I heard you and we were much further away. Sabo said with a smile. Luffy beamed at this, sitting down and running his fingers through the dust on the ground. But Luffy preoccupied for the moment Sabo got back to inspecting the room, though there wasn't much to inspect. The room was completely bare, dark and empty. The only thing in it was the dust Luffy was playing with and the brothers themselves. Well I'm not just gonna sit here and let them take us who knows where. Ace shouted suddenly, standing and turning to the door, turning the knob with no luck. His next step was to start banging on the door, and then to start throwing his weight against it, again, with no luck. Luffy watched on with interest and at one point even began to cheer on his freckled brother, while Sabo watched with a sigh. He had a feeling it wouldn't be that easy to get out. Ace stop, we have to think about this. Sabo said calmly, trying to reason with his hot-headed brother. Think what's the good in wasting time thinking when we can ram the door down and leave. Ace asked, enraged. Sabo did his best not to take his brother's anger to heart, knowing he was frustrated at being caught, not at Sabo himself. Say we do ram the door down, then what? Run out and fight the four grown adults with no weapons. Sabo asked, being sure to keep his tone even. Well yeah. We can take him. Then we can get off this stupid boat and go back home. Ace shouted, Luffy watching the two argue like a game of tennis. Alright, we magically ram the door down, then miraculously knock out our captors with zero effort at all. What's next on your list of good ideas? We've already cast off, as in, we're now surrounded by water, something that Luffy has no chance of swimming through seeing as he's eaten a devil fruit. Sabo said, slowly loosing his calm exterior. I can carry him. Ace shouted back defiantly. Sabo groaned, face palming. That's not the point Ace. Even if that was possible we would still need to get out of this room, which you're not having much luck in doing. Sabo said, his calm tone coming back. Ace puffed his cheeks in chagrin. So what's the plan Sabo? Were you so calm Ace asked, still annoyed. Because, there's no point in being angry right now when there's nothing we can do. Our best bet is to wait for someone to open the door so we can get out and worry about everything else after. Besides, from the looks of it, the man wants us alive. Sabo said. This confused Ace, causing him to tilt his head, Luffy observing and copying the motion. Ha. Huh? What makes you say that? Ace questioned, his anger melting to confusion. Yeah. Luffy mimicked, probably just wanting to add to the conversation. The boy was most likely bored already despite the situation they were in. Well, for one we're alive right now. Instead of hurting, or even killing us, he had us locked in here. Also, he was determined to head towards some island, and said that the sooner we were gone the better, meaning he's probably taking us to someone who wants us more than he does. Sabo said, recalling everything that's happened. Who would want us? Ace asked. Sabo had wondered the same thing, but didn't like any of the answers he came up with. Maybe someone found out about Luffy's parents, or his, or even Ace's. Maybe some nobles wanted him back. Maybe some pirates they stole from wanted revenge. Maybe the marines finally found out about the three kids Garp was practically hiding away in the mountains of a random island. The possibilities were endless. Who knows, there's a lot of reasons someone would want us. Sabo said quietly. It was quiet after that, Ace deciding to just sit down despite his previous determination to leave, and Sabo watched Luffy as he continued playing in the dust. The first thing to break the silence was Luffy's stomach growling loudly, the boy looking up with a pout. M-H-U-N-G-R-Y dot Luffy whined, frowning and holding his stomach. I know Lou, but we just have to wait and hope they give us food soon. Sabo said, voice laced with concern for the youngest, knowing how much he needed to eat, and how little they were probably going to be fed. Ace scoffed. But they feed us at all. Bastards. Ace grumbled. Sabo shot him a glare, one that told him that he was not helping the situation, but sighed in defeat instead, turning back to Luffy. Why don't I tell you a story? 
he asked, knowing that might drag Luffy's attention away from how hungry he was. Luffy immediately brightened at the idea, nodding happily. Um, um. Sabo's stories are always the best. Luffy cheered, settling in to listen. Sabo smiled and immediately launched into a story that he had read about pirates who were bad, turning good to save a princess which enthralled Luffy immensely. Especially when he brought up all the adventures the crew went on. And legend says that they were the freest pirates in the world. Sabo said after finishing his story. He noticed that even Ace had been listening, leaning forward on his hands as if he could hear better that way. Sabo smiled, turning his attention back to Luffy who was cheering happily. I wanna be free like that too. I'm gonna get a crew and become Pirate King, and then I'll be freer than anyone else in the whole entire world. Luffy cheered, and Sabo's smile widened at the unbridled joy that Luffy had just from the thought. I'm sure you can do it Lou, right Ace? Sabo asked, turning back to Ace who quickly pretended that he didn't care. The crab would be like him. As if. Ace scoffed, leaving Sabo to shake his head and Luffy to pout. I'm not a crabby. Luffy whined for the millionth time. It seemed this argument always found a way to come back up with these two. Before Ace had a chance to retort though the door opened, their blonde captor walking in with a tray. Dinner brats. It was then that the three noticed how dark it was outside, and the fact that they had been sitting in darkness for a while now. Before the brothers could do anything the plates were on the ground and the door was closed, leaving the boys in darkness once more. Food. Luffy cried happily, undeterred. Everyone managed to grab a plate and began eating, Luffy and Ace finishing quickly, still hungry. That tasted like rotten crocodile. Ace said, pushing his empty plate away. Sabo nodded his agreement as he slowly finished, but Luffy was still grinning. I want seconds. He said cheerfully, Ace rolling his eyes in response. There's no more idiot. Ace said causing Luffy to pout. But I'm still hungry Luffy said sadly. Why don't we go to sleep? In the morning we can figure out how we're going to get out of here. Sabo suggested, settling down onto the floor. Ace shrugged, laying down as well beside Sabo, Luffy moving in between the men laying down as well. Dayton's coming for us, right? Luffy asked softly, staring at the ceiling, though he could only see darkness. Sabo and Ace hesitated at that, glancing at each other. Finally Ace broke the silence, nudging Luffy. Course she is. I bet she'll even get the shitty gramps to come licking, and if that happens these bastards are screwed. Ace said, determination filling his voice. This caused Luffy to smile, pulling his hat over his eyes. Mm, -mm. Gramps'll beat him all up. Luffy said, the cheeriness back in his voice. The youngest quickly settled down after that, going quiet until his breathing evened out and his mouth opened slightly, indicating that he was sleeping. Sabo sighed. What if they don't come? Sabo asked, wondering if Dayton would risk telling Garp what happened. Of course she would, right? Even if she had a tough exterior she always had a soft spot for the three, but even if she told Garp would he find them? Would he use this as training? What if they got too far too fast and were taken to a remote island that wasn't on any maps? Sabo was shaken out of these musings by Ace's harsh tone. They will. Even if he is a shitty gramps he wouldn't leave us. Besides, the whole island probably heard Luffy. Someone will come for us. Ace said, seeming to say it more for his own reassurance than Sabo's. Sabo turned, watching his brother carefully, but he couldn't see much, except that he was staring up like Luffy had. The ex-noble opened his mouth to speak but thought against it and merely nodded. Yeah, you're right. Night Ace. Sabo said, closing his eyes and drifting off to sleep. Night Sabo. Chapter 2. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Days pass quickly. Quicker than the brothers would like to admit. Sabo had been right about the kidnappers here needing to keep them alive because they were fed three times a day. They weren't given much, barely crumbs compared to Ace and Luffy's usual portions, and the food was questionable at best, but at least they could always make out what it was supposed to be. For example, the hard stale brick of brown was bread, the round mushy brown object was an old apple, and the green mush was peas. They were also given a cup of water each with every meal, and Sabo could already see the effects of hunger on his brothers. Luffy, although thin to begin with, was quickly beginning to show bone, and his usual rambunctious nature was toned down, barely allowing him to do a lap around the closet without running out of energy. Ace was slightly better off, though his bad mood only got worse with each minute spent in their dark closet. The freckled boy was hungry, yes, but he wasn't thinning nearly as fast as Luffy was. Sabo was okay in terms of hunger, not having the large appetite his brothers had, though he was a little hungry. He always made sure to give Luffy and Ace some of his food despite their protests. He didn't need it as much as they did. Seeing as they didn't have much to do in their closet, Sabo had taken on the role of entertaining, whether it was through telling stories or even teaching his siblings the alphabet in the dust that accumulated on the ground. Ace was too grouchy most of the time to do much of anything except pout and bang on the door, and Luffy was more subdued than he usually was ever since they had been kidnapped. The youngest was quieter as well, but when he did speak it was as if nothing had changed. His voice was still as upbeat as normal, and his smiles were still just as bright. We should just bust the door down already. 
Ace shouted after having stood in anger for a few hours. Sabo sighed, having had this argument with Ace a multitude of times throughout their stay. Again, we can't do that, it's been, what, two weeks since we've been taken. We haven't stopped at a single island and we're in the middle of the ocean. Sabo said, exasperated. Luffy was ignoring the fighting, having heard it many times before, and instead was crouched, one arm wrapped around his legs that were huddled to his chest, chin resting on his knees, while his free hand drew in the dust. Oh? Was it a spider? The fight Ace and Sabo were having was completely blocked from Luffy's mind, as he smiled brightly at the little creature he was sharing a room with. Seeing the small bug reminded him of the bugs back in the forest, and his smile faltered a little, but he shook those thoughts away, holding his hand out for the spider to crawl onto. After a little coaxing, aka, continuously moving in the spider's path, they climbed onto his hand, and he watched as it crawled around and around, laughing. Then what do we do? Wait another week. Or year. Ace yelled, waving his arms in the air. Luffy's attention was drawn back to the fight, the smile leaving his face as he dropped his hand, letting the spider crawl off and away. We don't have a choice Ace. We're stuck in here. It's not like I want to do nothing, but when our other options are to go out there and die, I'd rather sit here and hope we reach a damn island soon. Sabo shouted back, equally frustrated. Luffy's frown deepened, hating that his brothers were fighting in the first place, hating that they were stuck in this stupid dark room, hating that he couldn't do anything to help, and especially hating how hungry he was. Boy, brats, quit your yelling. The door opened, and the black-haired man came in with their food, lunch, setting it down, and shutting the door quickly, as always, never giving Ace enough time to rush out. Luffy's mood got a little better at seeing his plate of food slide his way, courtesy of Sabo who was shaking his head, frown ever present on his face. We'll get out Ace, we just have to wait, Sabo said softly, staring at his portion of food, handing Luffy his roll and giving Ace his piece, leaving himself with the bruised apple. Yeah, well I'm sick of waiting. Ace grumbled. It was silent after that, the three finishing their food soon enough. With nothing to do Sabo decided to try and teach the two again, though it seemed only Luffy was really listening and trying. It was actually surprising that Luffy was trying to learn, but Sabo guessed it was mostly because the normally rambunctious child had nowhere to go or anything better to do. Glancing at Ace he saw the freckled boy pouting once more, arms crossed. You know, at this rate, Luffy'll know how to read before you do, Sabo said in an almost sing-song voice, a smile growing on his lips when Ace turned to glare his way. Really I'll be better than Ace at something cool. Luffy cheered, determination to actually learn increasing. Ace huffed, standing with fists at his sides as he stormed over. Like that'll ever happen. I'm older so it's only natural that I'm smarter than a crybaby like you. Ace said, plopping down beside Sabo and looking at the scribbles in the dust, trying to make sense of what the different lines meant. Now Luffy was pouting, arms crossed. I'm not a crybaby. He mumbled, though was ignored by his older brothers as Sabo tried catching Ace up. That was how the next few days went. Ace and Sabo would occasionally argue, Sabo would teach them the best he could, and they would eat the horrible food they were given, hoping to gain their freedom at the next island they landed on. And when the one month mark of being held captive was reached, it happened. We have to land at an island eventually, right Ace asked, completely fed up with being trapped in the dark closet. It has been a month, they have to be running low on supplies by now, Sabo said, though more to himself. Well the first thing I'm doing is getting out of this damn room, Ace said. And he was right. When the ship finally docked at an island later that day, the first thing that happened was that he got out of that room. They all did. Except there was a slight detail that was left out. They were dragged out. The three that had kidnapped them originally came into the room without warning, each grabbing one of the brothers without hesitation. The brothers were too weak from lack of food to do much against the grown, healthy, fed, adults, and there was the added disadvantage of having been locked in a closet where they had nowhere to run, exercise, or train. It was as easy as taking candy from a baby. We can finally get rid of you brats. Silver Eyes said as he walked onto the deck with his lackeys carrying the three. Let us go. He scrawled out, trying his best to wiggle out of his captor's grip. The brothers were blinded by the sun, unable to truly see where they were going as they were carried off the ship and onto land. The intense brightness was giving them headaches. Three kids, as promised. Silver Eyes was speaking, obviously to another person, but the brothers were still too disoriented, and only just starting to get over the brightness. Perfect, your payment, as usual. Pleasure doing business with you once more. A new voice said. Likewise. And suddenly the brothers were being transferred to new arms. Time for the first test. The new voice said. Just as their vision cleared they felt a prick in their arms, and suddenly, everything went black. Uggy groaned as he slowly came to. What had happened? Was he still in that stupid closet? What time was it? It was dark, but there was a dim light coming from somewhere that illuminated enough of the room that Ace was able to see more clearly than he had when in that closet. This definitely was not the closet. As he glanced around he saw that he was in a cell, the bars giving that fact away, though there were concrete walls surrounding him on every other side. 
The cell was just barely bigger than the closet had been, but everything, besides the metal bars, was concrete. The floor was just as dusty though, and the room was still dark, though not as dark. He saw Sabo and Luffy passed out beside him and saw they were still breathing, relieving him. Standing proved to be disorienting, the world seeming to tilt, causing him to stumble. There was a pounding in his head and his body ached, though there was a pain in his wrist that demanded his attention. Lifting his wrist to his face, he looked at the underside where the stinging was coming from, and blinked in confusion at what he saw. In bold black ink, there was the numbers 11,062 tattooed onto the inside of his wrist. The skin around the numbers was red, and the area stung like he was stung by a bunch of bees. Now Ace was thoroughly confused and annoyed that someone had given him this stupid tattoo in the first place. And what did the numbers mean? Wanting answers Ace moved to the bars, slower than he would have liked seeing as he was still disoriented and feeling slightly sick. Once he reached the bars he grabbed them to steady himself, shivering at how cold to the touch they were. Peering outside the cell proved difficult as he couldn't fit his head between the bars. The cell they were in was at the end of a hallway, the left being a wall, while the right showed what seemed to be a never-ending hallway of even more cells. It had to end though, right? He blamed the lack of lighting for the illusion, seeing as there was only one light bulb that he could see dangling from the hallway ceiling, a cell down from him. Grumbling in frustration Ace spun around, once again nearly falling over, and looked for any way to escape. There were no windows, no cracks, no holes, nothing. They were locked in yet another, this time literal, cage. Well, at least this one had a toilet in it. Their previous captors had not been so nice. Sabo, Luffy, get up. Ace hissed, falling to the ground and shaking his two brothers. He began to notice just how cold it was in the cell, as well as how loud it was outside of the cell. He could hear what sounded to be people in pain, but there was also the faint sound of screaming that unnerved him. Wake up idiots. Ace said, masking his worry with anger as he usually did. When Sabo groaned he nearly sighed in relief but held back. Ace. Sabo asked, rubbing his eyes, squinting. About time you woke up. Ace said. Sabo was still confused and had many of the same feelings Ace had woken up with, sore everything, pounding in the head, slightly sick feeling, and the stinging on his wrist. Confused he lifted his wrist up, brows furrowed as he didn't quite connect what he was seeing to what it actually was. It's a tattoo. I got one too. Ace said with a scowl, lifting his arm to show Sabo his own tattoo. Sabo's was the same as Ace's, except his number was 11,085. Well where are we? What happened? I don't know where we are, but it's a cell, and I don't know what happened. I think we were drugged. Ace said, unhappy with the mere thought of that. Sabo was silent a minute, trying to shake the sick and dizzying feeling away. Yeah yeah that would make sense, right? I think I remember getting poked by something, probably a needle Sabo said, blinking away the fog. Ace nodded. Me too. Whoever these damn bastards are I'm gonna beat them up. Ace declared, though there was no possible way that he could do that at the moment. How's Luffy? Sabo asked, glancing around for the youngest, finding him curled up beside him. Sleeping still. Oi, Luffy, get up. Ace said, slightly louder than normal as he began shaking the boy. Luffy stirred slightly, eyebrows furrowing as he slowly sat up and blinked his eyes opened, confused. Ace? Sabo? Where are we? Luffy asked, and Ace swore if he had to hear that question one more time he was going to explode. Sensing his brother's annoying Sabo took charge this time. We don't know Lou, we're someplace new, Sabo said calmly. Luffy looked even more confused the more awake he became. I heard everywhere. Luffy whined. Well so do we, suck it up. Ace demanded, crossing his arms. Luffy stuck his tongue out at his brother in retaliation. Meanie. Luffy said, Sabo rolling his eyes. Luffy, let me see your wrist, Sabo said, taking his brother's left wrist in his hand and flipping it over, finding the same tattoo, this time with the numbers 11,097. What's that? Oh, is it that cool marker I use sometimes on Ace's face? Luffy asked, a smile brightening on his face. Ace glared in fury while Sabo shook his head, frowning. No Lou, it's a tattoo, Sabo said, sighing and dropping the wrist, massaging his head. His headache was only getting worse. A tattoo? I don't remember getting that Luffy said, head tilting as he tried to remember. We all got one when we were sleeping, dummy. Ace said gruffly. Luffy straightened, understanding shining on his face now. Oh, that makes sense. Luffy exclaimed as if that answered all his questions. The question is, why did we get them? Sabo asked, looking back at his own numbers. No, the question is how do we get out of here, Ace shouted angrily, stomping back towards the bars. Hey. Anyone there let us out of here. Ace shouted down the hall, his voice echoing and mingling with the many other sounds of pain coming from the other cells. Sabo frowned, moving to the bars as well with Luffy, both stumbling slightly before righting themselves. Peering out they saw nothing but more cells on either side of the dim hallway. No one's gonna listen to you. A voice said from the cell across from them. Oh yeah, and who the hell are you? Ace spat out. They couldn't see into the cell so they couldn't tell who was talking, nor how old they were. I'm 11,049. 
the voice said, their voice seeming to belong to a boy, though slightly higher pitched. 11,049. Sabo asked, thinking to his own tattooed number. Yeah, you know, the number on your wrist. No one here cares what your real name is, just whatever number test subject you are. This only confused the brothers more. What's a test subject? Luffy asked innocently. Sabo hesitated, he and Ace sharing a glance, before turning back to the youngest. It doesn't matter Lou, why don't you explore the cell, or even draw in the dust? Sabo suggested. Luffy smiled and nodded, not really interested in the conversation anyway, and moved further into the cell. Sabo sighed in relief, turning to face outside the bars again. So, we're test subjects? Sabo asked. Exactly. All we're good for now is letting those doctors run tests on us, and hoping we did good enough to get food. 11,049 said bitterly before being attacked by a coughing fit. You don't even fight back Ace asked in anger. There was a strained laugh from 11,049, almost a little too weak. Once you're in here your life expectancy isn't more than two weeks, at best three. Fighting back does you no more good than jumping into the lion's mouth willingly. They said, their voice growing more and more quiet with every word. Well how long have you been here? Sabo asked, his mind running 100 miles an hour at the thought that this could be it for him and his brothers. Two and a half weeks, and let me tell you, each day is a new level of hell. 11,049 said. But look, maybe you guys will be different. The sentence was said with a strange bitterness, almost as if they didn't believe their words as they were saying them. It went silent after that, the coughs gone and a silence reigning over the two cells. What does that mean? Or, hey. Ace probably would have kept trying to get a response if Sabo hadn't placed his hand on his shoulder, eyes wide. Ace I think they died he said quietly, mindful of Luffy who had been playing in the dust. Ace's eyes widened at the prospect, turning to look out the bars again before a frown grew on his face, and he slammed his fist on the bars. Damn it. He shouted in fury, storming off to the corner of the cell, leaving Sabo to stare sadly at 11,049's cell. Luffy had looked up at Ace's outburst, frowning slightly, confused. He didn't want to bother Ace right now, his oldest brother looked like he would snap at him if he tried getting close, and even Sabo looked weird. Luffy knew that since they had been kidnapped his brothers had been constantly worried, but there had been nothing he could do but continue trying to stay happy. Sabo. He asked quietly, watching his brother turn to look at him, his eyes still slightly white and skin a shade paler than normal. It's okay Liu, we'll be fine, just stressed is all, Sabo said, though not as reassuring as he had hoped to be. Luffy merely nodded, watching Sabo as he moved to the wall and sat against it, putting his head in his hands. He looked back at Ace to see him hugging his legs, head resting on his knees. Luffy wasn't nearly as happy as he had previously been, a frown forming on his face at the thought of his brothers being so mad and sad. They didn't know how long they had been unconscious before, and they didn't know how much time had passed since they had woken up in the cell. It felt like maybe an hour had passed, but they had no way of knowing what time it was, or even what time of day it was. There were no windows anywhere. Sabo thought that they might be in a basement due to the fact that it was so cold and dark. The sound down the hall drew the brothers' attention, Ace running to the bars, fury still on his face. What do you see? Sabo asked. Ace squinted as if he would be able to see better in the dark if he did. After a few seconds of silence if you didn't count the other people there making sounds of pain, Ace's expression turned to anger. Hey. Who are you? Where are we? Ace shouted, voice echoing down the hall. Sabo moved to the bars as well, seeing a person in the distance walking towards their end of the hall, peering into every cell as he moved, nodding at some, frowning at others. Eventually, he got to their cell, peering at the one across from them and sighing, shaking his head, writing something down on a clipboard before turning to them, a bright smile on his face. Ah, you three are awake. Wonderful. He said, his voice almost too cheery as he scribbled more things down on his clipboard. When he finished he put the pen in his coat pocket, giving them his full attention. Welcome to the facility, I'll be your doctor, Hare. Hare announced. Ace continued to glare at him, and Sabo felt uneasy just being near the guy. Luffy was watching from the back of the cell, frown on his face and unease filling him. Let us out of this stupid cell. Ace shouted, gripping the bars tightly, his knuckles turning white from the pressure. Hare sighed, clicking his tongue and waving his finger. Now now, I know you're eager, but you three aren't scheduled for tests until after lunch. He said as if they wanted to be here. Ace growled at him, sticking his face up to the bars. I don't want to be a part of your stupid tests. Let us out of here. He shouted. Hare pretended not to hear him, smiling again and turning to look at Sabo, and then Luffy. Yes, you three will make fine test subjects. You're the one with the devil fruit, correct 11,097. He asked, staring at Luffy who didn't say anything, not liking the look in the doctor's eyes. Leave him alone. He scrawled out, not liking the way he was looking at his brother. Sabo's eyes narrowed as well, the unease leaving long enough for the anger to settle in, as he felt the familiar protectiveness over his youngest brother fill him. I can't wait until this afternoon. Breakfast will be here soon. 
Harry said, turning and walking away, Ace glaring at his back until he couldn't see him anymore. Sabo turned to Luffy, moving to comfort him as the straw-hatted boy seemed unnerved. It'll be okay, Lou. Why don't I tell you about these cool pirates, the royal renegades? Sabo suggested, Luffy turning to look in interest. Encouraged, Sabo continued. Their jolly Roger was a grinning skull and crossbones with a tilted crown on its head. It was said that everyone on the crew used to be some sort of royalty, king, queen, princess, prince, or even just a cousin of a king. Sabo said. Luffy slowly became more interested. Why did they become pirates? He asked in a soft voice. Sabo grinned widely at the question. Because they wanted to be free. Chapter 3. Soup, tests and needles, oh my. Time in the cell passed quickly. Ace and Luffy were distracting themselves, listening to Sabo's many stories, and before they knew it, there was a new sound coming from the hallway. It sounds like something's rolling, like a cart Sabo muse, stopping his story as he and Ace moved to the bars to look out. Luffy didn't move from his spot, though he hadn't moved from there the entire time, except when they talked to 11049. Ace and Sabo watched the darkness for movement, Luffy watching his brothers. Eventually, they were able to see that it was a cart being pushed by someone new. They would stop at every cell, open the door, and slide something in before closing the door again and moving on to the next. Soon enough they were able to see that it was bowls filled with some strange green soup. Sabo cringed at the repulsive color of it, and stepped away from the bars. I guess breakfast is here. He said, sighing and sitting. Ace stayed at the bars, yelling at the guy who promptly ignored him. Soon enough the man reached their cell, sliding in their own bowls, as well as a cup of water each. Luffy looked at it, face scrunched as he tried making out what was in the soup. It was an unappetizing shade of green with unidentifiable chunks in it, and the smell was worse than sour milk. What is this? Luffy asked, lifting his spoon and watching the almost slimy substance drip off his spoon. Food maybe? Sabo said, unsure. I don't think this even classifies as garbage. Ace said, his face scrunched in disgust. Well it's better than nothing I think, Sabo said lifting the spoon and looking at it, his face scrunching up as he took a bite. Ace and Luffy watched in amazement as Sabo was able to swallow it, sticking his tongue out in disgust. Not good he groaned, but he was right, it was the best they had, so they all held their noses as they ate, slowly but surely. It tastes worse than medicine. Luffy whined, though he continued to eat it without any complaints. When they were finished the three felt sick to their stomachs, but they weren't hungry, which was a first. Ugh, that was worse than anything I've ever tasted. Ace moaned out, chugging his water, though the taste still lingered. And so they were left alone once more with nothing to do. Instead of telling more stories, Sabo decided to teach Luffy and Ace a little more on how to read. After some time passed they were given lunch, the same green slime, and water. Didn't that wacko doctor, Ace made quotes with his fingers at the word doctor, a scowl on his face. Say something about tests after lunch. Ace asked, not liking the sound of it. Sabo frowned, nodding, while Luffy merely looked confused. Tess? He asked. That's correct. Are you all ready? The voice came from outside their cell, a familiar one at that. Harry walked in, swinging a set of keys around his fingers as he moved ever closer. The three jumped to their feet, Ace and Sabo moving in front of Luffy protectively. Who would want to do stupid tests? Ace snarled. Harry ignored him, looking at his clipboard. It seems 11,097 is up first. Harry's voice was almost too cheerful as Ace and Sabo glanced at their wrists, seeing that it wasn't their number. They turned to Luffy with white eyes, the youngest watching back with equally large eyes, tears of fear already starting to form. He didn't know what was happening, he didn't know where he was, he didn't know anything, but he did know that he did not want to go anywhere near the man that called himself a doctor. Ace and Sabo spun back to Harry, ready to defend their brother, but they couldn't do anything when there were needles jabbed into their arms. What the hell Ace asked, falling to his knees, brows furrowing in confusion. He couldn't move. He turned, seeing Sabo fall as well. Harry walked past them, moving to grab Luffy who began scooting away in fear. He go away. Ace Sabo help. Don't let him take me. Luffy cried out, the tears falling hard and fast as he soon backed himself into a corner. Luffy. Ace and Sabo shouted simultaneously, wishing they could help. Their hearts broke at the sight of Luffy as terrified as he was. Come now 11,097, we have lots to do, Harry said, a slight edge to his voice as he reached for Luffy, picking him up effortlessly. The straw hat fell off the boy's head and slowly fell to the ground. No. Let me go. Let me go. Ace. Sabo. Luffy shouted as Haru carried him out of the cell. Luffy. It was useless for the boys to even try anything. No matter how hard they struggled to move their limbs wouldn't respond. Damn it. Damn it. Ace shouted in fury, falling completely to the ground. Sabo watched, mouth agape as his little brother disappeared out of the cell, his screams reaching them even after they couldn't see him. What are we gonna do? We have to get him back. Those bastards can't just take him like that. Ace continued to shout, drawing Sabo's attention back to him. W we were given some sort of drug that paralyzed us. 
Ace, there's nothing we can do until it wears off. Sabo said sadly, feeling horrible. Well, I'm tired of not being able to do anything. They just took Luffy goddammit. Screw waiting, screw hoping that shitty Gramps finds us. We have to get Luffy and get out of here. The shouts only got louder as Ace continued talking. Sabo swallowed, nodding his agreement. They both felt horrible after witnessing Harry take Luffy with little to no effort. They had only sat there and watched as their brother cried for their help. I know, I agree with you Ace, we'll get him back and we'll get out, Sabo said, determined. Ace seemed ready to say more but stopped, eyes gleaming in frown permanent as he turned, glaring at the cell. Ace. Sabo. Luffy's shouts echoed around him as he was once again carried off to an unknown destination. They were about halfway down the hall when a door appeared on their right and Harry turned, opening it and blinding Luffy with how bright it was inside. Squirming and doing his best to get out of the doctor's grip did nothing as they moved into the room. It was all too bright and the walls and floor were too white. The combination gave Luffy a headache, and there was a smell that surrounded him that made it worse. It was almost too sterile in the room, and it reeked of medicines and rubbing alcohol. As Luffy's eyes adjusted he saw that the room was big and open, machines filling almost every inch of space that they could. Along one wall there were three tanks that were transparent, showing the water that filled the tank. Next to the tanks was a row of chairs with straps on the arms and legs of it, and next to those there was a wheelie table with random shiny things Luffy couldn't identify. In the middle of the room, there were metal tables, also equipped with straps, and more wheelie carts and lights that could be pulled closer from the ceiling. The opposite wall had machines that Luffy would probably never know what they did. Welcome to the Lab 11097. You better get used to it because this is the only room you'll be seeing for a long while. Harry said sinisterly, sending a shiver through Luffy as more tears pulled into his eyes. He was carried over to the chairs where he was immediately strapped down, more people coming into the room wearing the same white doctor's coat as Harry. Preparations are ready. One of the voices said. Luffy's mind was in overdrive, the fear and adrenaline making him jittery as he struggled against his binds. Perfect, we shall begin immediately. I need blood drawn first before we can move on to any testing. I wonder where we should start. Harry mused as someone moved to Luffy, hacking him up to tubes and wires. Someone else came over as well, drawing blood before leaving the room completely. I think we shall begin with the pain tolerance for a boy with a rubber body. Luffy didn't know if minutes passed, hours, or even days. However long he was in that room for, though, was nothing but absolute hell. Voices mingled, needles poked into his skin, lights shone brightly in his face, and all the meanwhile hair stayed cheery, maybe even more so than when they started. These results are absolutely perfect. Quick, on to the next test. Let's find out how far a rubber body can stretch before it can't anymore. That one was the worst. Hands pulled at his arms, tugging and stretching the limb as much as they could, Luffy too weak to even form a fist with all the drugs he had been given. He knew when he had reached the limit, but the doctors didn't stop pulling, tugging Luffy's body with him. Within seconds the skin started tearing, blood beginning to rise to the surface. The doctors let go, moving out of the way as the limb began flailing around, retracting back to normal length. Amazing. At its limit, the skin begins tearing. And it's like a spring. The potential energy forming proves to be quite disastrous when released. Harry announced, scribbling notes down. Luffy stared at the ceiling, panting heavily from exertion. Next. Move him to the table. If it's true that everything is rubber then that means that even everything inside is as well. Organs, blood vessels, maybe even nerves. They wished they at least had a clock in this damn cell. He was tired of guessing how much time had passed, and he was tired of just lying on the ground doing nothing. Hey, I think I feel my arm. Sabo suddenly said. Ace lifted his head. Really? I don't feel anything. Ace whined as he watched Sabo start wiggling his fingers. Maybe mine was weaker than yours or something. Or maybe they gave you more. Sabo said, still focused on his arm as he slowly moved the entire arm, shoulder and all. My other arm too. It's wearing off. Sabo said, elated. Ace was about to whine some more when his arm suddenly tingled. Hey, I think mine is too. Ace said happily, wiggling his fingers like Sabo had. Over ten minutes the two slowly began moving their limbs again, one by one, until they were standing and moving like they used to. Alright, now we just need to get out of Ace was cut off by Sabo slapping a hand over his mouth, confusing Ace. He shouted behind the hand, but it came out muffled as Sabo shushed him. I think I hear footsteps, Sabo said, moving to the bars. Ace followed, hoping it was Luffy. It was hard to identify the many sounds surrounding them, and even harder to just focus on just one, but they did their best, and after a few seconds Ace heard it too. Definitely footsteps. The two watched with hope, praying their brother would be okay. Luffy. Ace and Sabo shouted, relief filling them as Haru came into view, the small boy stumbling beside him. The eldest brothers didn't bother hiding their joy or relief at seeing Luffy, moving to the cell door as they waited impatiently for them to finally reach the cell. 
Eventually, they reached it, Harry opening the door and Luffy stumbling in, collapsing as he passed the threshold of the cell, the door slamming and locking shut behind him as Harry left. Normal testing resumes tomorrow. All subjects get ready for a day of fun. Harry's voice echoed through the halls, but the brothers could care less as Ace and Sabo ran to Luffy, hugging him tightly. A groan of pain left Luffy's mouth, causing the two to pull away quickly. Are you okay Luffy? What happened? Sabo asked, worried and scared. The youngest was panting heavily, eyes barely opened as if it was too much effort to even try. Boy, Lou, you okay? Ace asked, trying to mask his concern but not succeeding very well, his face giving it away. It hurts Luffy moaned out, laying on his back. Sabo hesitated before examining Luffy. He noticed bandages peeking out of his shirt and lifted it slightly revealing his stomach which was completely wrapped in bandages, not a single piece of skin showing. There even looked to be bruises on his skin, which was odd seeing as Luffy shouldn't be affected by blunt objects to get bruises in the first place. His arms were also littered in red spots that Sabo recognized were marks from being poked with a needle, having one on his own arm from the shot Harry had given him and Ace. Luffy Sabo uttered in shock, eyes wide. Ace was just as shocked, though it quickly turned to anger, as usual, the freckled boy clenching his fists tightly to try and control himself. It hurt Sabo I don't want to go back. Luffy cried, tears falling. Sabo was at a loss. Pulling Luffy's shirt back down, Sabo smoothed his brother's hair back, sweat covering the youngest's forehead. Don't worry Lou, we'll get out of here. The words were spoken in a soft tone, while Luffy continued to cry for a while before drifting off to sleep. A Sabo said quietly, not moving his eyes from Luffy. Those goddamn, good-for-nothing bastards. Ace growled out, obviously wanting to be louder but not daring to risk waking Luffy up. Sabo didn't know how to reply, still trying to get over his own shock and anger. The two sat in silence, all their attention on Luffy, and doing their best to make him as comfortable as possible. Neither of the boys wanted to speak, but the horrifying sounds coming from everyone else trapped in their own cells only proved to make Ace and Sabo's skin crawl. Eventually, they couldn't take it anymore. What now? Sabo jumped in surprise at Ace's sudden, loud, exclamation. We would get out, Sabo said softly. Ace's eyes narrowed. How? You always got those plans of yours. Ace said, deciding that they would probably need one to get out. As much as he wanted to use brute force and run out, it probably wouldn't be that easy. Well we don't know what anything looks like, or even the layout of the building. I think we're in a basement so we would also have to find some stairs. Luffy might know a way out though. Maybe they took him through some different rooms, he could have seen some stairs on the way there. Sabu said, trying to think clearly. And if we know where the stairs are the next step would be finding the door out of here. It would be nice if we had a map, but I don't know where we'd get one of those. Not to mention the fact that we have to find a way to get out of our cell first, and then we'd also need more strength to fight against anyone after us, which would probably be everyone in this building. Sabu continued. Ace groaned. Stop talking, I regret asking for a plan. Mine's better after all. Ace grumbled. All the steps and situations Sabo made up in his plan, made it seem harder than it should be. Oh yeah, what's your grand plan? Sabo asked, already having a feeling he knew what it was. Ace grinned maliciously. Easy. Bust the cell door down and run out of here. Ace said. Sabo sighed, shaking his head. I think you're purposely forgetting the part where a ton of grown adults swarm us. Not to mention, we have Luffy to worry about. And your plan also doesn't take into account the fact that we still need to find the stairs and the door out of here. Sabo pointed out, looking pointedly at Ace who pouted. I didn't forget. It's called being opto-opti-optimeric. No, that wasn't it optoralic. No. Optimistic, Ace. The word is optimistic. Sabo informed Ace with a sigh. Ace scowled. Whatever. That's what I am. Ace said defiantly, causing Sabo to scoff. Ace, you're the complete opposite of an optimist. You're the exact definition of a pessimist. Sabo laughed out, Ace's scowl only deepening. Who cares if I'm pessimistic? Pessimistic. Whatever. You know what, fine. We'll go with your stupid plan. Ace shouted, crossing his arms. He was done with the conversation and never wanted to hear the words optimistic or pessimistic ever again. Sabo continued to laugh for a few more seconds before calming down, clearing his throat. Anyways, if we are going with my plan then we should really try and find a map somewhere if we can, Sabo said. Ace nodded, showing he understood. Maybe one of the people around here have one, but that's a stretch. If worse comes to worse you're just gonna have to run around blindly. Sabo said, really hoping it didn't come to that. What about Ace stopped talking, confusing Sabo until he heard the sound of the food cart rolling down the hall. We can talk later, but we should be careful, if the people here hear about our plan they could stop us, Sabo said in a whisper. Ace nodded his agreement to the statement. What should we do? Ace asked. Sabo thought for a moment, the rolling cart getting closer. We could talk in another language, Sabo said offhandedly. Ace gave him a look. I barely know how to speak this language, now you want me to talk in another. We're not all bookworms, Sabo. Ace said. 
I don't know any other languages either. I meant we could make up a language, like sign language. We stay silent, but we can understand each other through different signals. You know, like this, Sabu said, demonstrating. He scratched his left ear while Ace gave him a confused look. Could mean something like, someone's listening. Scratching our right ear could mean that we hear something or someone. Stuff like that, Sabu said. Ace was about to retort that it would be too difficult to understand and annoying to make up, but thought better of it, nodding instead. Yeah, okay. He said with a sigh, the rolling cart coming up to their cell. Ace was about to look at the person serving their food when he saw Sabo scratch his left ear. Ace scoffed, flicking Sabo's forehead. Hey, what was that for? Sabo asked though he was smiling. Their food slid into their cell, and the rolling cart went back down the hall, while Ace rolled his eyes, grabbing the food. That means, you're an idiot. Ace said, handing Sabo his bowl and moving Luffy's toward the sleeping child. Sabo laughed lightly, turning to look at Luffy. Hey, Lou, time to eat, Sabo said, his voice turning soft and gentle. Ace watched with a slight concern showing, but hid it with his disgust as he ate his soup. A groan came from Luffy as he blinked his eyes open, looking around in confusion. Tired Luffy mumbled, closing his eyes again. Sabo shook him lightly. You can sleep in a minute Lou, you have to eat first, Sabo said. Luffy was silent, but nodded, moving to sit up before wincing. I still hurt, Luffy went quietly. The middle brother nodded, helping Luffy sit against the concrete wall. I know, you can lay back down soon. Come on, I'll help you. Sabo said, helping spoon the food into Luffy's mouth, the youngest grimacing at the taste. Ace watched, his anger rising towards the doctors that did this to his youngest brother. He gripped his own spoon tightly, eating almost automatically. Hey Lou, we came up with this cool idea so that we can talk without saying anything. Sabo suddenly said, his voice a little louder, but not much. Luffy peered at Sabo, confusion on his face. How can you talk without talking? Luffy asked dumbly. Sabo laughed. Well, there's this thing called sign language where you use different signals to communicate with others. Ace and I were coming up with some, right Ace? Ace looked up in shock, Sabo breaking him out of his thoughts. Well I mean yeah. Ace said face set back into disgust due to the soup. Cool. Luffy said, though there wasn't as much enthusiasm behind the word as there used to be. The youngest did have a smile on his face though so Ace sighed. Yeah, Sabo made up some moves, like this, meaning someone's listening. Ace said, scratching his left ear. Luffy nodded as if he understood, and Ace wondered if he really did. Suddenly Ace's face brightened. This is my favorite though, I made it up. It means, you're an idiot. Ace said, Sabo already glaring at him, but Ace ignored it, flicking Sabo's forehead again, causing the blonde to pout, while Luffy laughed. We still have to make up a lot more motions though, so we can have full conversations with each other without talking, Sabo said after getting over the flick. Luffy nodded, finishing the last bite of his soup and yawning. Alright, time to go back to sleep Lou, Sabo said, helping Luffy lay back down. Mm. -hmm. Night Ace, Night Sabo. Luffy mumbled tiredly. Night Lou. The brother's course. Luffy fell asleep almost immediately as Sabo reached to pick his own bowl up, grimacing at the taste and sticking out his tongue. Seriously, do you think they're trying to poison us with this? Sabo asked. Ace merely shrugged, having finished his. Who knows, those bastards probably get a kick out of it chapter 4. Life inside, life outside. The brothers spent their morning eating breakfast and talking. The two had asked Luffy where he had been taken and what happened, but Luffy had gone distant, not saying much, except that it was a really white room, and he really hurt. They didn't ask any more after that and instead started creating new signs for their sign language, Luffy finding it enjoyable which encouraged Ace and Sabo to continue doing it. Luffy seemed to be feeling a little better today, though was still sore and aching in some places, barely able to sit up comfortably. Oh? And this could mean, you stink. Luffy said, scrunching his nose up as Sabo laughed and Ace reprimanded Luffy. Why would we need a sign like that dummy? Ace asked. Luffy pouted. Because you smell, Luffy said bluntly. Ace flushed and sputtered while Sabo laughed louder, knowing it was true. The three hadn't been able to take a bath in a month, so they were all smelling riper than normal. W well so do you. Ace shouted back defensively. Luffy pouted, crossing his arms. Do not. Before a fight could break out Sabo calmed himself down, planning on being the mediator. Now now. You too. We all smell. Even Sabo. Ace said. Hey. Sabo said, an offended look on his face, even though he knew it was true. Ace is a meanie, Luffy muttered, causing Ace to scowl. Footsteps sounded in the hall, and the brothers were amazed they even heard them. It was pure luck that they almost always heard footsteps when the sounds of pain coming from the others in cells was loud and overwhelming. It was never silent in the hall. Who's ready for some tests? A voice asked cheerily from down the hall. It still sounded far away, but the sound of a cell opening and someone screaming and crying was loud and clear. Luffy shivered beside his brothers, and the two stood up defensively. They had watched Luffy go last time without being able to fight. This time they were going to be prepared. 
The sound of cells opening and people screaming continued to echo throughout the hall, gradually getting closer. 11,023, 11,059, 11,004. It was Harry's voice reading off numbers, sending chills down the brothers' spines. 11,080, 11,040, seems we need to send 11,049 out, Harry said, coming into view of their cell and looking at the one across from them, 11,049's cell, the one who had talked to them their first day there. Sobel paled, having assumed the person there had died that day, and when he heard nothing from that cell, since he assumed he had been correct. The doctor Sabo found it was easiest to just call everyone their doctors, whether they were ones or not went into the cell, and Ace and Sabo watched as he pulled out a body that was definitely no longer alive. They had no hair and there were bruises and cuts littering the small person's entire body. They looked like they were older than Sabo and Ace, but not by much. Ace shifted his stance to completely block the body from Luffy's sight. They both turned green at the sight, but also the thought that the poor person had been rotting in that cell for at least a day, and no one had noticed. Now, back on task. Seeing as there is now an extra opening, 11,097, 11,062, and 11,085, it seems you're all up for tests today. Harry said in his normal cheery voice. Ace growled at the man as two of the doctors came in, grabbing Ace and Sabo, despite them doing their best to fight back. Turns out, they were a lot weaker than they thought due to lack of proper food and training. Harry came in as well, grabbing Luffy who was much too weak to even struggle. Let us go. Bastards. Ace shouted, being pulled out of the cell and down the hall. Sabo was pulled out behind him and, though he struggled, he spent more time looking at his surroundings. He saw the end of the hallway now, cells lining the entire two sides of the hallway. There seemed to be about 20 cells, 10 on each side, and at the very end of the hall on the left, there was a space next to the last cell. Sabo assumed it was a door, and made a mental note of it in his head, turning to focus on the right side. There was the same amount of cells, but instead of the extra space next to the last cell, there was an extra space in the middle, about 5 cells in. Sabo could clearly see a door here as well as they got closer, and realized that that was where they were headed. All the doctors had a person in their hand, each with their own numbered tattoo. They were all being taken into the room in a line, those who were still in their cells cowering in the corners. Eventually Ace was taken into the room, still struggling and arguing, and then Sabo. Glancing behind him he saw Luffy watching in terror, though he wasn't crying or screaming this time. There was a resigned look in his eyes, and Sabo hated it. Finally, all three brothers were in the room, the last ones in, and they were all taken to chairs with straps on them and strapped down. Where the hell are we? What's going on? Ace shouted, not getting the hint that no one was going to answer him. The doctors were all huddled together, talking and showing each other their clipboards. Sabo looked at the others in the chairs and noticed that all the test subjects. It felt wrong to call them that. Victims. Close enough. He noticed that all the victims were young, the oldest looking to be 13 at most. They all had their heads down, silent, and Sabo felt uneasy by the zombie-like manner that they held themselves with. Ace, shut up, Sabo whispered, trying to get his brother to stop talking. It wasn't doing them any good if they weren't getting answered, and the most it would do was draw attention to themselves. Ace turned to argue with Ace, but Sabo narrowed his eyes. Sign language or not, Ace knew that meant to listen, so he did, but not before grumbling to himself. Sabo tapped his index finger rapidly on the arm of the chair he was strapped to a few times before stopping, Ace watching intently as he got the hint. Calm down. Ace nearly scoffed, lifting his middle finger slightly higher than the rest of his fingers, turning a smirk to Sabo. Like hell. Sabo rolled his eyes, turning to look at Luffy, and was unnerved to see that he was in the same pose as all the other kids, not even looking towards him or Ace. Blue. Let's begin shall we? Suddenly all of the doctors in the room were advancing on them, each one going to a different child, because that's what they all were, children. Ace and Sabo watched as Harry moved towards Luffy, but before they could do anything not that they really could do anything anyways they got distracted by their own doctors advancing towards them, poking needles into their arms. Ace was arguing with his but getting no response, and Sabo was trying to find a way to get out of the restraints, having no such luck. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Harry pulling Luffy's cheek, watching it stretch before letting it go, and watching it snap back into place, Luffy not even flinching. Again, he was distracted by another needle being poked into his skin, noticing briefly that at some point they had drawn his and Ace's blood, two doctors coming to take the blood-filled bags away. Now, though, the doctor was injecting a strange blue liquid into Sabo's arm, and he had a feeling it was not going to make him feel better. It continued on this way, all of the children getting injected with weird serums, some screaming in pain from their injection, some falling asleep, others going almost rapid, struggling furiously against their restraints, growling and snarling. Sabo was having a streak of bad luck with his injections, all causing him various amounts of pain. Ace's injections had all been knocking him unconscious, his doctor giving him smelling salts to wake him back up, only to repeat the process by injecting him with yet another needle. Luffy wasn't getting as many injections as the rest, and Sabo figured it was because he had a devil fruit. 
Air seemed much more interested in exploring the different properties of Luffy's abilities, and if he did inject Luffy with something it would, in one way or another, affect his brother's fruit. Clear table. Hair announced to some of the helpers in the room, nurses. One of them nodded, heading to one of the many metal tables in the room, and clearing any bottles or needles from it, opening the restraints. Sabo, through his pain, turned to watch Hair unstrap Luffy from his chair, carrying him over to the table and strapping him down once more. Sabo hated the helplessness as he watched Luffy lay motionlessly on the table, staring at the ceiling. Hair pulled the light down from the ceiling and cut off Luffy's shirt, throwing the scraps to the side and unwrapping the bandages. Sabo was sure that if Ace were awake long enough he would be yelling at Hair, but as it stood now his brother was barely up more than a minute before passing out again. Amazing. There's absolutely no trace of a wound. Not even a scar. The rubber material of his body merely mended back together. Hair said in amazement, and Sabo wanted to yell at the man who was continuously hurting his brother, but another injection only had him crying out in pain. I wonder if the same would happen to a burn mark. Would it mend over a leave on healed scar tissue? Hair asked, the nurse running off and grabbing something. Time passed, testing continued, and everything was pure torture. Eventually, one by one, the children were all unstrapped and sent back to their cells, doctors chattering to each other about all the amazing test results. Sabo, Ace, and Luffy were the last three to leave, Sabo first, Ace second, and then finally Luffy. Throughout the entire session, Ace had continuously been put to sleep while Sabo was put through pain, physically and emotionally. Ace hadn't been awake to see what happened to Luffy, and Sabo was immensely grateful that he hadn't been. It was horrible to watch, especially when Hera continued to smile sickeningly at the different results of Luffy's tests. Sabo was just happy to be laying down on the hard cold ground of their cell. Ace was groggy, though awake, beside him, groaning and trying to sit up, though he was disoriented. Ah damn bastards. Ace slurred out, holding his head. Sabo didn't even look his way. Though he was concerned for his brother, he just didn't have the energy to move. Boy, Sab, you okay? Ace asked. Sabo could only groan in response, closing his eyes. Ace looked at Luffy and saw that the boy was much the same as he had been the first time he'd come back from testing. What happened? Ace asked, only to realize quickly that both of his brothers were sleeping. His lips thinned to a line as he thought about what could have happened. He hadn't been awake much in there, and the bits he was awake for weren't comforting. He could remember hearing his brother's screams, see Luffy on a table being stretched, see needles poking into Sabo's arms, but every time he was about to get a clear view on things he was knocked out again. It frustrated the freckled boy at how little control he had over anything in this place. The sound of the food cart coming made Ace's stomach turn. He was hungry, sure, hungrier than normal even, but the thought of that green garbage in a bowl almost made Ace want to skip eating for once in his life. Almost. Dinner. A man said, the same man who always served them their meals. Ace took one of the bowls, bringing it to his lap and eating quickly. If it was dinner already that meant they had missed lunch, meaning it had been a good few hours in that stupid testing room. After finishing the vile soup in record time Ace shook Sabo awake, the blonde groaning, but opening his eyes anyways. What's happening? Sabo asked, looking around, wincing as he sat up. Dinner. Ace said, handing his brother the ball and moving to wake Luffy up. Dinner. How long was I out? Sabo asked, massaging his forehead, picking up the spoon and eating slowly. Only a few minutes. We were being tested on and missed lunch. Ace said, his words turning sour as he mentioned the fact that they had, in fact, been tested on. Ace was tired of feeling helpless over everything. Come on Lou, dinner, then sleep. Ace encouraged, lifting the boy up gently, resting his head in his lap. He normally wasn't this affectionate to his brothers, and he was definitely glad they were probably both too disoriented to even remember this later, but this was an exception. Ace helped slowly feed Luffy, the boy completely drained like last time. Sabo finished first and said a quick goodnight before passing out again. Ace sighed, hand holding the spoon tightly in unrestrained anger, as he gave Luffy the last of the soup, setting Luffy gently back on the ground. I'm happy Ace heard Luffy mumble out, breathing out a sigh of what seemed to be relief, confusing him greatly. Your happy ace asked incredulously. They weren't exactly in a situation that afforded them any happiness. A ma'am, Luffy hummed, nodding his head. Why? This place sucks. Ace said, almost angry that Luffy could be so oblivious sometimes. Because I'm not alone. I hurt everywhere and I'm tired and cold, but I'm not alone. I've got Ace and Sabo with me, so I'm happy. Luffy said, drifting off before Ace could reply. The freckled boy stared, mouth agape in wonder at his brother's words. He knew of his brother's near phobia of being alone, claiming it was worse than being dead, but how could he still find happiness like that in a place like this? Sometimes Ace wished he could be like Luffy. The boy always seemed to be happy, despite his circumstances, and when Ace thought about it, being happy by even the smallest things was better than being angry at everything. He was still going to be angry though because he was not Luffy. He was Luffy's older brother. He was Sabo's older brother. He was supposed to protect them, and so far he was doing a piss-poor job at it. 
They were kidnapped, kept on a tiny boat, now locked in a cage, being tested on, and barely being fed edible food. He had done nothing to prevent it and done nothing so far to try and get them out. Even now, as he looked at his sleeping brothers, shivering on the ground from how cold the cell was. Ace frowned as he took the sight in before nodding, determined. He shuffled in between the two, pulling Sabu close to him and resting the blonde's head on his chest, wrapping his right arm around him to try and warm him up, doing the same to Luffy, pulling him close so they could warm each other up with their body heat. Ace couldn't do much in the way of getting them out, or planning, or thinking, or anything like that, but he could try and make them as comfortable as possible until they were freed. Meanwhile, in a little village filled with windmills, there was a man sitting in an empty bar, drinking heavily. Barb Sand, I don't think you should be drinking this much. A green-haired barmaid said politely, concern laced in her voice as she watched a man down another drink, demanding another. Bah! I deserve it. The marine bellowed somnily. The barmaid sighed. Please Garp San, it's only been a month, I'm sure we'll find them, you always do after all. She said with a small smile. Garp remained silent, staring into his empty mug. Ah, I guess you're right Makino, you always are, Garp says softly, closing his eyes. Mind if I have a bottle, I'm sure that old bandit would like the treat, Garp said. Makino nodded. Of course. She said, rushing off, grabbing a good bottle of sake and handing it to the marine. If date in my regards, she's taken all of this pretty hard despite her trying not to show it, Makino said with half a smile, her eyebrows furrowed in concern. Garp nodded, taking the bottle and leaving the bar, heading to the mountain bandit's hut. It took some time, but he eventually reached the hut, heading straight inside without knocking. The dare Zentero, Garp said. A bandit said in fear once realizing who it was. Garp. Dayton addressed Somali, stuffing a tissue into her pocket. Garp nodded to her, tossing her the sake, which she caught. Brought you that. Makino sends her regards. Garp said, sitting on the floor. Dayton sighed. That girl. Well, I can't pass up good sake. She said, pouring some for herself, ready to pour some for Garp as well until he waved her off. I've already had some of my own. He said. She nodded mutely, setting the bottle down and chugging her drink. So nothing new. Dayton asked, already knowing the answer. Garp shook his head. I've had my men search the whole of the East Blue and the South Blue. All that's left is the North Blue and the West Blue, and if they aren't there they're in paradise of the New World. If that's the case it could take decades to search every island for them. Garp said sadly. Dayton nodded. My good-for-nothing brat is even out looking. From what I've heard the revolutionaries have been spotted on islands all over the New World in paradise, but even he hasn't found anything. Garp continued, closing his eyes. Damn it if only we had been a little faster, Dayton growled, remembering the day they had been partying without a care, until they heard Luffy scream, shouting for Dayton. They had rushed out, the surprise of one of the boys actually calling for them shocking them enough to move as fast as they could, but as they chased what they assumed to be a person holding their brat they lost him, only to find a ship leaving the shore shortly after. Dayton, despite the fear, called Garp, telling him what had happened, and the man immediately went on a rampage, searching the whole East Blue within days, having his marines span the whole blue in search of his grandsons. Don't blame yourself, besides, we both wronged them. If I hadn't spent so much time away I might have been here to keep them safe. That's all I ever wanted, was to keep them safe. Gurp said, tears forming in his eyes. Everyone in the hut began crying, mourning over their lost brats. Chapter 5. Mikens and Chalk. Ages. Ace, Sabo 11. Luffy 8. A year had passed almost too quickly for the three brothers, every day being a new, and worse, hell than the last. The doctors found the three to be their favorite test subjects, which was unfortunate for them because it meant they were tested on constantly. The doctors also seemed to be amazed that the boys had survived that long, causing Ace and Sabo to remember the conversation they had with 11,049 all that time ago, saying they wouldn't live past three weeks max. They had fallen into a routine. Eat breakfast, hang out for an hour, then go for testing, which lasted until dinner. Eat dinner, go to sleep. It was an easy, simple routine, but they were rarely given any breaks from testing. When they were it was only because they were too injured, and the doctors didn't want to risk killing one of their prized subjects, so they would get a day off. Those days were both a blessing and a curse. Sure, they got out of that horrible lap for a day, but that meant they had to sit in the cell alone, wondering what was happening to their brothers who were still being tested on. They had also seen many test subjects come and go over time. Even though they seemed to be outliers and survived a year, everyone else lasted the usual two to three weeks before they passed away. The brothers had opted to ignore everyone else in the facility, because what was the point of recognizing a face that would be gone in a few weeks, or even days? It was breakfast time. The sound of the rolling car coming their way woke Ace up, having gotten good at listening for it in the morning. Ever since that night a year ago the brothers had gotten accustomed to sleeping close together, Ace in the middle with Sabo on his right and Luffy on his left, the two resting their heads on his chest. Hey, breakfast, Ace announced, shaking his brothers who woke relatively quickly. 
They were all light sleepers after more than a few incidents where Harry or another random doctor would come in and drag one of them off for early testing. The brothers went closer to the bars, waiting for the usual man to come serve them food, but were surprised to see a woman doing it this time. It had always been the same guy before, so who was this new person? Luffy caught his brother's attention by doing a quiet snap, more of just the sound of his fingers rubbing together than an actual snap. Luffy scrunched his nose, tilting his head at the same time. Where's the smelly guy? Over the year the three had gotten proficient in speaking purely through their made-up sign language, even if there was no one listening to them. Sabo shrugged subtly, wiggling his fingers. I don't know, fired. They turned their attention back to the woman who was reaching their cell. She gave food to the cell across from them where, this week, there was a small girl around six in there, terrified. The woman then turned to them, hesitating a moment as she looked at them before smiling gently at them, only furthering their confusion. So, I'm assuming you three are the famous trio then, hmm? She asked, getting no response other than a glare from Ace and Sabo, shifting Luffy slightly more behind the two older brothers. Don't worry, I don't plan on hurting you three. Here, breakfast. She said, pushing their balls in for them, though it was the same unappetizing slop as usual. Even the woman grimaced at it. Is that stuff as bad as it looks? I snagged these, but I could only grab two, sorry. She said, pulling two megans from her coat pocket, the same doctor's coat everyone else in the facility wore. She handed the fruit to Ace who took them hesitantly, eyeing the woman suspiciously. What was she playing at? No one here was nice to them, so why was she? Though his mouth drooled at the sight of actual, sweet, food, he didn't dare eat it, fearing it might be a new lab or a test the doctors were putting them through. He looked at Sabo who gave him a confused look as well before they both turned to look at the woman. Don't worry, they're just normal mykins. Go on, if rumors are true and you've been here a year, then that should be a little treat, right? She asked. They still didn't say anything but Luffy, who had been watching the woman intensely, rubbed his fingers together again, getting his brother's attention once more. He smiled brightly at them, nodding his head ever so slightly. Good. Ace gave him a pointed look, tilting his head. You sure? Luffy nodded again, and Ace and Sabo gave the woman one more glance. Luffy hadn't felt comfortable around any of the doctors in this facility, so the fact he felt that this woman was good, meant there was a high probability that she was. Ace looked at the two Mekans, tossing one to Luffy and splitting the other for him and Sabo. The three looked at the fruit, almost not wanting to eat it. Go on. They're good, I promise. The woman said with a smile that gave them all a slightly nostalgic feeling, remembering Makino. Ace peeled a piece of the fruit off, popping it in his mouth, and almost tearing up at how amazing the taste was. He ate the piece greedily, peeling another one off and eating it. Sabo and Luffy followed his lead, both enjoying the amazing taste as well. See? Good, huh? My name's Emily, pleased to meet you three. She greeted happily, smiling again. Luffy smiled brightly at her, waving as he ate the fruit. I would love to stay and chat some more, but I should leave before they notice anything. Here, I also brought this, after all, it must be pretty boring in there, huh? She asked, rolling a few sticks of chalk into the cell. Luffy's smile only brightened, having drawn in all the dust by now to the point that there was no more left to coat the floor. I, see you three later. Emily said, waving as she pushed the cart back down the hall. What was that all about? Ace asked, eating his soup, though he left a piece of fruit for after he finished. Who knows? Another test. Sabo asked. Ace shrugged. She was nice. I liked her. Luffy said, eating his soup quickly and moving to finish his fruit. Yeah, but why was she nice? She works in a place where they do experiments on children. Does she not know that? Ace asked with a growl. No, she knew about us, she knows about what they do here. There's no use in worrying about it now though, so let's just wait for the doctors. Sabo said. Oh? Can we play tic-tac-toe Luffy asked happily, thinking of all the games they could play now that they had chalk. Sabo smiled. Sure, and since you two are getting better at reading we can try playing some hangman too, Sabo said. Ace and Luffy gave him a confused look. Hangman? What's that? Ace asked. Sabo laughed, taking a piece of chalk. I'll teach you later, you watch for any doctors, Sabo said, sitting in the corner with Luffy as the boys started drawing the grid. Ace grumbled but went to the bars anyways, looking out. The three played tic-tac-toe for a little bit, letting Luffy win. After each round, Sabo and Ace would switch spots, one playing, one on the lookout. After a few rounds, Sabo explained how to play hangman, and Ace and Luffy agreed on trying it out, Sabo and Luffy going first. Alright Lou, this one's got four letters, okay? Sabo asked. Luffy nodded, a determined look on his face. MMMO. Luffy announced, Sabo smiling as he drew an O on the ground in the second to last spot. Yes. Ace, look. I did it, I got a letter. Luffy cheered happily. Ace rolled his eyes but was internally happy that his baby brother was happy. The job Lou. He said, Luffy beaming at the praise. Next letter. Sabo asked, also happy with how late it Luffy was. Then. Sabo made a buzzing noise, drawing ahead. 
Luffy pouted, though became more determined. D. Sabo nodded, writing the letter D in the first spot. A mess? Luffy asked, trying to come up with words. Sabo buzzed again, drawing a line for the body. Oh? P. Luffy asked, determined to win. Sabo smiled, making a ding noise and writing a P in the last slot. Oh? Oh? Is it drop? Luffy asked. Sabo made more dinging noises, filling in the last letter and clapping. The job blew. Sabo said as Luffy cheered happily. Even Ace was clapping a little for Luffy. Ace's turn. Luffy said cheerfully, taking Ace's spot as the guard. Again, rounds continued this way, except Sabo stayed to make sure the words were actually spelled correctly. After some time and a few rounds, it was back to Luffy's turn. Seven letters. A little longer than the others. Sabo said, erasing the previous round where Ace guessed the word travel. Luffy nodded, ready to win. R. Luffy said, eyes narrowed. Sabo nodded, writing in the letter R. S. Sabo buzz, only making Luffy more determined, an intense look in his eye. P. Another buzz. F. Sabo dinged, the first letter being an F. U. Luffy asked, unsure. Sabo buzzed and Luffy frowned. M. He said, wanting to win. Sabo dinged, the last letter being an M. Though the game was cut off when Ace snapped twice, the signal someone was coming. Sabo quickly erased any trace of the chalk being on the ground, hiding the sticks behind the toilet. Luffy frowned, sad that the game had been abruptly ended. Sabo snapped at him and he turned, seeing Sabo showing him his hands. Luffy lifted his own, palms up, and Sabo quickly started rubbing of the chalk dust lingering on his fingers. It was just in time because the cell opened and their numbers were announced. 11,062, 11,085, 11,097. The three left the cell wordlessly, not even fighting back. Sabo glanced back at the cell, looking at the spot they had been playing in seconds ago. The word had been freedom. Pure 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 pure, the snail rang in its usual monotonous voice. Pure 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 pure, the left eye of the snail had three lines across it, scarring it. Hello? The voice was light, carefree. What have I said about answering those when you don't know who they are? A voice in the background said, chastising the one who answered. Ah, whatever. The voice said, laughing. Anyways, who's this? They asked. It's Garp. The marine answered with a tired sigh. The snail gave a confused look. Garp? Now, why are you calling me? Gonna come to visit. Garp gave a breath that would once have been a bellow of laughter. Luffy's missing. Confusion turned to shock, and then there was yelling. Anchor, since when? What happened? Garp was wondering if he should really entrust this man with the information he was about to tell him. It wouldn't be the first time he corresponded with pirates, and his options were running out. It had been a year now that his grandsons went missing without a trace. He had searched all the blues and had moved on to paradise and the new world, but there were so many islands it was nearly impossible to search them all. The year now. He and his brothers were kidnapped from Dawn Island without a trace. Garp informed. To hell with Sengoku and the navy, this was his family. If he had to resort to pirates, he would. Kidnapped wait, Luffy has brothers. Garp smiled slightly, nodding. Yes, both older. I took an ace before Luffy was born, had him live in the mountains. He made a friend named Sabo, and the three soon became best friends. They called each other brothers. Garp reminisced, smiling at the memory. What do you need? The tone was back to serious, and Garp's smile fell. I've had my men search all the four blues and as much of paradise in the new world that we could, but we found no trace of them, Garp said, looking at the maps of different islands they'd searched. I can keep a lookout on the different islands we land on. I'll have a few go off to some other islands too. Garp sighed in relief, nodding. Thank you red hair. Shank's smile lit up on the snail. Nobody takes the little anchor and gets away with it. Over the next few days, Emily continued to make appearances at the brother's cell, bringing different goodies every time. Sometimes she brought candy, other times it would be more chalk, saying that she didn't want them to worry about the other sticks wearing down too much. She even snuck fruit sometimes, mostly Megan's, but on rare occasions, she would bring a few apples for them to share. The brothers warmed up to her quickly. She was just as nice as Makino, and gave off a motherly vibe that they had only ever felt from the green-haired woman. You nice Emily. Luffy said on the fourth day of knowing her, shocking the woman seeing as they had never spoken to her. She got over the shock quickly, smiling to Luffy. Thank you Luffy, that's very nice of you to say. She said happily, crouching down outside their cell. Why are you so nice? Ace asked suddenly, Luffy and Sabo glancing at their brother. Ace had an accusatory glare settled on her, and though the question shocked Emily, she smiled quickly again. Because being mean is mean. I see no point in it. She said in a very Luffy-like manner. But you do know what they do here, right? Sabo asked. What those doctors did definitely constituted as mean. Emily sighed, nodding. Yes, I know exactly what they do, and it's not right. Not right at all. She said with a frown. She took a deep breath, calming herself and smiling again. That's why I'm here to help. 
No one, especially not children, should be subject to horrors like this place, she said. What do you mean help? Ace asked, skeptical. Another smile lit up Emily's face as she glanced down the hallway, leaning in closer to the cell and whispering. I mean help, as in help get you out of here. She said, pulling a piece of paper out of her pocket, and quickly sliding it in through the bars. Sabo picked it up, confused, and opened it, eyes widening in shock at what he saw. T this is Sabo stopped himself, looking up at Emily in shock, Ace and Luffy, giving him confused stares. Yes, it is. Keep it safe and hidden, nobody can find that. She said sternly. Why? What is it? Ace asked, trying to lean in and look at it, but Sabo quickly folded it back up. Here, I brought tape. You can tape it to the bottom of your toilet. She said, ripping a piece off and handing it to Sabo who quickly scurried to the toilet, taping the paper to the underside of the tank. I have to go now. Good luck today. Emily said, waving and pushing the food cart away with her. Ace spun to Sabo, wanting answers. What was it? He asks in a mere shout. Sabo lifts a finger to his mouth sternly, shutting Ace up. A map. When Sabo signed the words Ace's eyes widened in surprise, Luffy grinning stupidly, probably not really understanding how helpful the item was, but knowing it was a good thing. Really? Sabo nodded at Ace's sign, causing Ace to smile happily. 11,077, 11,000, 11,019. The happiness was short-lived. Back to testing. It seems to be Akagami. Are they a threat? No, they want to talk. Send the others inside. The first mate nodded, following his captain's orders and sending most of the men on board inside. Red-haired Shank's ship came up beside theirs, the red-haired captain himself standing near the railing. Permission to come aboard. Permission granted. The select few watched as Shanks crossed over to their ship, sending a wave of hockey through the air. Shanks walked up to the captain, a bottle of sake dragging behind him. What do you want Brad? I've got something I want to discuss with you. Brought some healing water too. Shanks said, lifting the sake with a smirk. There was silence, and then a laugh. Rarerar. What is it you want to talk about then? Shank sighed, sitting down, cross-legged. Remember when I told you about the one I wagered my arm on? Shanks asked, gripping his missing arm. The large man in front of him nodded. Shanks frowned. He's been kidnapped. Been gone for a year now. The tone in Shanks' voice was on edge. There was silence again, Shanks pouring drinks. How does this involve me, Brad? A sigh. Because, Whitebeard, you travel a lot. You've got a lot of crewmates, a lot of territories. All I'm asking is for you to keep an eye out for three kids. Whitebeard raised an eyebrow. Kids? He hadn't known who Shanks had wagered his arm on, but he didn't expect it to be a child. Shanks nodded. I've already got my men on the lookout, but we could use the extra eyes. It's Garp's grandson, the damn anchor. He was such a smiley kid, wants to be a pirate and all. Shanks said with a smile, remembering his time with Luffy. Whitebeard looked at the pirate, noticing the look in his eye. I'll have my men keep an eye out. What do they look like? Whitebeard asked. Two of them were Levin, that's Ace and Sabo, the oldest brothers. Luffy's only eight, that's Garp's grandson. Shanks started before going into full detail about the three. That was the description Garp gave me though, I've never met the two older ones. Shanks finished. Whitebeard nodded, sipping from his cup. I'll ask the islands under my protection if they've seen them, Whitebeard said, the conversation over now. Shanks nodded, standing and grabbing the empty bottle of sake. I'll be seeing you then, Whitebeard, Shanks said, walking back over to his ship. Gurerar. See you brat. Chapter 6. One step forward, fifty steps back. Outside of this hallway this place is like a giant labyrinth. Sabo mumbled to himself as Ace and Luffy peered over his shoulder, all looking at the map Emily had given them. That's correct. Everywhere outside of this hall is complete darkness. All of the staff here wear these lenses over our eyes to see. The doctors here know some really smart scientist who supplies them with all the new inventions and tests. Emily informed, lifting up a pair of glasses that look normal enough. Then how are we supposed to get out? Ace asked. Emily sighed. I'm still working on a solution to that problem. We only get one pair of these glasses. If we lose them we don't get replacements. Emily said, frowning slightly. But what are all these rooms? Sabo asked, looking back down at the map. According to it, once they left this hall the rest of the basement was a condensed maze with doors leading to dead ends and curving hallways. There was only one way to get out of the maze and into the hall leading to the stairs, but a door leading off that hallway confused Sabo, as it led to a giant room. Everything here, Emily began, pointing to the maze of halls. It's just empty hallways. Pitch black. That big room there is a lab. That's where they take the blood they've drawn and the test results. Emily explained. Sabo nodded. So, definitely don't go in there. He said, his brothers nodding their agreement. This is the only path out of the basement, so memorize it. If you lose your map you don't want to have to wander aimlessly and end up back here. Emily said sternly, the brothers nodding again. What about when we get upstairs? Ace asked, seeing as they had no map for that part. That's the hard part. 
If they know you're escaping they'll send everyone they've got at you. Most of the guards are stationed upstairs so when you do get there it'll be almost overwhelming. The good news, though, is that all you have to do is run out the big glass doors. Emily said, smiling again. Ace and Subbo glanced at each other, while Luffy got distracted by a bug. It was the first one he'd seen since the spider in the closet a year back. But how do we get past all the guards? Sabo asked slowly. Emily gave a nervous laugh. That's going to be tricky. I plan on trying to stall them. Hopefully, I'll be with you and can get up there first and lead them away, but if I get caught sooner, then your best bet would be to try and sneak by. When you get up the stairs all you'll have to do is enter the main hall and go out the glass doors, but there's a chance that guards will be stationed at the doors. She said. Luffy was completely gone from the conversation by now, knowing Ace and Sabo would be able to handle it, and was making an arena with the chalk for the spider to crawl around in. I should go now. Here, it's the best I could find today. Emily said, sliding in three pieces of unwrapped chocolate. They thanked her as she left, popping the candies into their mouth, giving Luffy one. They had just been given breakfast meaning testing would be soon, which they definitely weren't looking forward to. Ace, Sabo, look. It's a spider. Luffy said, finishing his chocolate. I haven't seen one of them in a while, Sabo said. It was surprising, the lack of bugs, seeing as they were in the basement. Yeah, well if I were bug, I'd get out of here too. Ace said with a scowl. Suddenly Sabo was scratching his ear, and the brothers stopped talking, hearing the footsteps. Time for testing. 11,032, 11,088, 11,090. I'm gonna kill him. Ace growled out, staring at Luffy who was sleeping. Ace, calm down, I know you want to. Don't tell me to calm down. Look at what they did to him. Ace shouted, gesturing to their brother's body. It was littered with cuts and bruises, and Luffy's breath was labored, sweat running down his face. I know, Ace, I know. I see what they did, damn it, I was there. Sabo said in exasperation. Ace went silent at that while Sabo took a deep breath. I know. I hate it too, trust me, I do, but there is no point in getting angry right now, especially when we have no way of controlling anything. The most we can do now is try and help Luffy the best we can, Sabo said. Ace was quiet for a minute before nodding, the two moving to sit beside Luffy. The doctors had decided to test the effects of sea stone inside of a devil fruit user's body, injecting Luffy with some in liquid form. They had even continued to test on him after they had given him the sea stone, completely disregarding the boy's declining health. All of this sucks. Ace mumbled out, anger diffusing, though it was still there and would resurface the next time he saw hair. Sabo rubbed his fingers, Ace watching as he scratched his ear. Ace tilted his head, rolling his fists. Food. Sabo nodded, having heard the cart. Ace seemed to brighten somewhat. He made a motion of wrapping something round his arm, tilting his head again and pointing to Luffy. Help for Luffy. Sabo flattened his hand, raising it to face palm down. Maybe. The two got up, sticking as much as they could out the bars to see further down the hole. After some time Emily finally gave everyone else their food, reaching their cell. Hi boys. Oh, poor Luffy, I heard what they did, but I didn't think it was this bad. Emily said, turning her head to look into the cell where Luffy was still laying down. Can you help him? Sabo asked. Emily hesitated, looking between the three, a slight look of fear in her eyes. I, I can. She said after a minute. Ace and Sabo smiled happily at this. Great. How? Sabo asked. Again, there was a slight hesitation before Emily pulled out a needle full of a pinkish liquid. What the hell is that? Ace asked, examining the needle carefully. It's something the doctors made up. They think it'll completely flush sea stone out of someone's system within seconds. Emily said, handing over the needle to Sabo. They think. Ace asked, skeptical. They haven't been able to test it yet, and I sold the one needle they had prepared for the test, Emily said, her voice lowering. Everyone stared at the needle, knowing the significance of what Emily just said. But they found out she took it, who knew what would happen to her. Then I guess we'd better try it out, Sabo said, standing up. Ace gave him an incredulous look, moving to intercept him. What? Are you crazy we don't know what that could do to him? Ace shouted. Sabo glared at him. Yes, we do. We know that this could completely fix Luffy. We have to hope it does, because if it doesn't, then who says he won't just get sicker and die? His devil fruit has been helping him heal rapidly, and now that it's nullified by the sea stone he's only going to get worse. Sabo shouted back. Ace hesitated, looking between his two brothers before finally moving out of the way. Fine. I don't like it though. Ace growled out. Sabo nodded, happy, and slightly surprised, at how little of a fight Ace put up. Sabo moved back beside Luffy, kneeling. You don't have to like it until it helps him, Sabo said, sticking the needle into Luffy's arm, making Luffy groan in pain, and injecting the pink liquid into his vein. Everyone watched with bated breaths as Luffy slowly gained color, breathing returning to normal, and expression changing from pain to peaceful. I, I, I think it worked, Sabo said softly. Suddenly Luffy groaned again, eyes squeezing as he sat up, blinking rapidly. 
W. What happened? He asked, looking around. Y before Sabo could finish that sentence, though a shot rang out down the hall, many of the children in their cells screaming at the sudden noise. All three brothers lit outside their cell to see Emily's eyes widening in shock, mouth falling open as she fell to the floor, blood oozing from her wound. She'd been shot. Emily. Sabo and Luffy shouted in shock, both moving to the bars quickly. Ace followed, just as shocked. My my, it seems the serum worked perfectly. I had a feeling you would take it to them, so I kept an eye on you. Harris said, gun in hand as he watched Emily fall. Emily. Luffy asked softly, trying to reach out and touch her, but she was just out of reach. He didn't know what was happening. One second he was hot and weak, and the next he was completely fine. Before he knew it though, Emily was being shot right in front of him. Why? You bastard. Ace shouted, fury showing on his face as he gripped the bars aggressively. I prefer doctor, 11062, Hare said, grabbing the food cart, leaving Emily's body in the hall. Clean up in aisle 3. Hare called down the hallway in a sing-song voice, laughing maniacally. It echoed throughout the hallway until it finally quieted, leaving them alone in their cell, Emily lying on the floor. Ace opened his mouth to speak, but all three jumped when they heard a voice. B-boys. Emily's voice was weak and strained, her breathing light barely there. Her eyes were open halfway, peering over to the three. Emily. Luffy cried out, sliding to the ground, holding the bars, Ace and Sabo doing the same. Emily coughed. Ilji get out of here, Don worry she mumbled, Sabo trying his best to hold back tears while Ace glared at the ground. Luffy was openly crying, tears and snot running down his face. I just as want to help, want to get you all out of here. She said softly, eyes closing. He promised me, you'll get everyone out of here, P please she mumbled out, opening her eyes again to look at them. We'll get them out em, promise, Sabo said quietly, Luffy nodding his agreement rapidly. Emily smiled. Thank you it came out in a whisper, her eyes closing for the last time, breath leaving her, but smile still showing on her face. It was silent, no one knowing what to do or say. At last, Luffy broke it. Hey Ace, asked Sabo. Luffy shouted, turning to them, tears still falling rapidly. Sabo opened his mouth but didn't know what to say. Luffy he finally said, pain clear in his voice. The boy jumped into his arms and began sobbing loudly. Sabo knew he had really liked Emily. He had too, and he was sure Ace did as well. She was nice to them, made their days in the cell almost bearable with edible food and things to entertain themselves with. Now she was gone. Damn it. Ace shouted, and it was obvious he wanted to hit something, throw something, punch something, anything to get his aggression out, but there was nothing in their cell to do that with. He opted to banging on the bars. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Ace shouted over and over, Luffy only sobbing louder and louder. Within a few minutes, a man entered the hallway, retrieving Emily's body and leaving without a word or look their way. To hell with this place. Luffy stopped crying. I hate crybabies. Ace shouted, spinning to face him and Sabo. Sabo glared at his brother, knowing he was angry, but that didn't mean he could take it out on Luffy. Luffy merely sniffled, not even bothering to argue that he hadn't been crying. Calm down Ace, we'll get out of here, Sabo said, though he knew the words were falling on deaf ears. Oh yeah? How? Emily was our only chance. Now we have no way of getting through the dark halls, past the guards, or even out of this damn cell. Ace shouted. I don't know, but we will. We have to. Sabo shouted, anger building inside himself as well. You know what I'm tired of holding on to hope when it's getting us absolutely nowhere. Face the facts, we're stuck in here. Not getting out till we die. Ace shouted, and Sabo had to keep himself from punching his brother, though he did stand suddenly, leaving Luffy to sit on the ground, watching. Don't you say that. Since when do you give up on something? You're as stubborn as a mule. Sabo shouted. Ace glared. When I face the facts that we're done for. Sabo growled, grabbing his brother by his worn and dirty shirt. We're gonna get out of here. Alive. That's my resolution. By the time you and I are 17, we will be out of here. No matter what. We'll be free. We can be pirates. Sabo said, letting go of Ace and backing away. Ace watched, mouth open, not sure what to say anymore. Luffy sniffled again, standing finally and looking at Ace. A and I won't cry. I won't cry till we get out of here. Not a single tear. Luffy promised resolutely, head high. Ace was still speechless but scoffed. You're right, you're a crybaby, it's what you do. Ace said, trying to go back to his abrasive attitude. Nua. I promise I won't. Luffy shouted. Ace watched him silently for a moment, knowing Luffy normally did everything in his power to keep his promises, and didn't make them unless he could keep them. Sabo and Luffy stared at Ace, waiting for his response. Well well, I'm gonna live my life with no regrets. If we do get out. We will. If we get out, then I don't want any regrets in my life. Ace said. Silence. Then, they all smiled. It's a promise then. By 17, we'll be out of here and live our lives without regrets. We'll get everyone out of here like Emily wanted. Sabo said. And I won't be crybaby. Luffy added. 
Sobble laughed. And Liu wouldn't be crybaby. He agreed, holding his hand out. Luffy smiled happily, putting his hand on top of Sabo's, the two watching Ace, as he examined the hands before huffing and putting his on top of the pile. The promise between three brothers. Sabo said, the three pushing their hands down and then into the air, cheering. The rest of the day passed normally, and by breakfast the next day it was like yesterday never happened. The guy that used to give out food, before Emily, was back, handing the food out without expression. The brothers went back to being silent, not sure how much Harry knew about their plan to escape. Did he know about the whole thing? That they had a map? Or did he not know anything? Well if he did know he let them keep their map, which was still taped to the toilet. For now, they were going to assume he knew everything. Ace and Sabo continued to discuss what they could do to fill in the holes of their plan, but were coming up with blanks. There wasn't much they could do now, and there was no way for them to get any more outside help. Despite this, they continued trying to think of different things, ways for them to escape. After their promises were made they were all more determined than ever to get out. They had given themselves a time limit, something to work towards, and now all they had to do was achieve their goals. Perfect, effect. Perfect. Luffy said happily. Sabo had written some words with the chalk for Luffy to practice, while he and Ace talked through their made-up sign language. They chose no, Aussie. No, that's not right. Mm house ss. House. Luffy continued, going down the list. Maybe we could try something when they're taking us for testing. Ace suggested. Sabo shook his head. Not unless we have a weapon or something. They could easily restrain us, and we haven't been able to train in a while. Sabo signed back. Coco Cola. Luffy tilted his head in confusion, not quite sure he had said that word right. Sabo looked over, hearing his confusion and shook his head. Close Lu, the O in that word don't make the O sound. The A is in silence. Sabo said, not bothering to sign it. Luffy nodded, re-examining the word. Do you think any of the doors are locked? Ace asked, and Sabo sighed. I hope not. We should have asked before. Sabo replied. Koe la. Luffy muttered to himself, shaking his head. Koila wasn't a word right. It's not a word. Well, we can't ask now, so we have nothing to go on. Ace signed, his movements becoming more erratic as he got more frustrated. Coco. Don't worry, we just have to solve one thing at a time. Sabo signed carefully, trying to calm his brother down. Koa. How are we supposed to do that when we can't solve anything? All of our ideas aren't working. Ace signed with a growl. Koala. Ace. Koala. Luffy was beaming, turning to look at his brother for confirmation that he was right, but frowned when he saw Ace was angry, his signing much faster than normal. Don't tell me to calm down. I'm going to sleep. Ace signed with a huff, standing and moving to the back of the cell where they normally slept. Luffy watched silently, turning back to look at Sabo who was sighing. Yes Luffy, the word was Kola. Chapter 7. New Year, New Tests. Ages. Ace, Sabo 12. Luffy 9. Another year went by quickly. The same straightforward routine, the same testing, the same horrible food. The brothers tried their best to think of things they could do to help them escape, but had come up with nothing. Sabo had been surprised by Ace's behavior when Emily had died. He'd never seen Ace just give up, but when she died he didn't seem to even want to try anymore. It was off-putting. He was glad that he had given him something to strive for, a deadline, and hoped that that moment had just been due to all the stress, hoped that he would never have to see his brother act so uncharacteristically again. So far, he was back to normal. It had taken a while for all of them to get over Emily's death, especially Luffy, but everything was back to normal. Normal sucked. Normal was having needles poked into you. Normal was eating gross soup out of necessity. Normal was wondering if you would ever escape hell on earth. The only thing that broke normal was the weird room that was being built. The brothers had noticed it when the doctors first started working on it. It was a room that was adjacent to the lab that they tested on them in. They had seen the new door suddenly appear in the room, Harry boasting to them that it was going to be an extremely helpful room. Day and night the doctors, or whoever worked on the room, were building, leaving many with restless nights from the loud noises. Today, though, it was finally done. I want 11,062, 11,085, and 11,097. They were the only three numbers called, confusing the brothers as their doctors came in, dragging them off to the lab to, presumably, be tested on. After two years of the same thing there was no point struggling, so they let it happen. Hare led them to the room, an unusually happy smile on his face as he did. The brothers ignored the practically relieved looks coming from the other children in the cells. The brothers had been there two years and survived. If they could distract the doctors from testing on the others for even a day, they would. Finally, after all this time, I get to unveil the new statistician to our facility. Hare announced as they entered the lab. Ace and Sobo looked at each other, confused, while Luffy stayed silent, face expressionless. I like to call it, the training room. Hare said dramatically, the doctors leading the brothers inside the room that had been worked on for the past year. Once inside the three brothers looked around, confused. 
It was a simple room, extremely large, and completely covered with fake grass. In the middle of the room was a dirt circle, and around the perimeter of the room was a track. The walls were painted a light, sky blue, and the entire thing looked as if they had tried to make the room look like outside. With this room I'll be able to expand the variety of tests I perform, and seeing as you three seem to lack an expiration date I thought I'd get you used to your new room. I have a feeling you three will be spending a lot of time in here. Harry said, laughing. Turns out, the brothers hated the training room more than they hated the lab. It was awful. The doctors would send them in there with other test subjects, and they were forced to attack each other, until the doctors decided it was okay for them to stop. Of course the doctors didn't stay in the same room during this. They had snail cameras all over the ceiling, watching them, and speakers in the corners, so they could talk to them without actually coming in. The brothers didn't want to fight the kids and had tried boycotting it at first, until they threatened them. You will fight the other subjects. Harry said calmly, as if stating a fact. We won't fight anyone except you damn bastards. Ace shouted, Sabo beside him with an equally angry expression, while Luffy stood slightly behind them, his expression ranging from discomfort to anger. There was something about the way Harry was talking that unsettled Luffy more than usual. If asking politely won't work, then I guess some persuasion is in order. You will fight, because if you don't, then I'll separate you all into separate cells. Harry said. This caused the boys to hesitate. Being in the same cell was probably the only thing keeping Ace from going on a suicide mission, not to mention keep Luffy sane. Sabo had seen the look in the youngest's eyes, especially when Ace would go on a rant about never escaping. After Emily had died Luffy's personality had slipped from being his normal, loud, happy self, and devolved into sadness, silent, and sometimes, emotionless. He was scared that, soon, Luffy wouldn't show any emotion at all. We can't be separated. Sabu signed the words discreetly to Ace who nodded back his agreement, knowing that wasn't an option. He had noticed Luffy's emotions, or lack thereof, and after talking with Sabo, they had agreed to try and keep Luffy as happy as they could, to keep him from slipping. Fine. Ace spat out after a moment of silence. Hair's smile widened. Wonderful. And so, the days and weeks after that, they were forced to fight with the other subjects. They felt like they were breaking their promise to Emily, but there was nothing they could do. They had tried everything, even losing on purpose, but they were soon found out. You have to actually try. Hair had said, actually showing a hint of annoyance which made Ace happy. We are. We haven't exactly had the most exercise over the past two years. Ace growled back, crossing his arms. So the three boys who could take down animals larger than a house, suddenly can't take a kid who's been deprived any type of nourishment for a whole day, and had no fighting experience before now? Haru asked. Ace shrugged. Apparently that would be the case. He said snidely. Haru sighed. You know, I've been lenient. I've given you food every day, let you stay together, and even let you keep that chalk in your cell, but if you still refuse to fight the way I know you can, then I guess I'm going to have to be persuasive again. Ace and Sabo frowned, knowing that they were at the doctor's mercy. Harry seemed to know this as well, smiling. Maybe we should run another sea stone test on 11,097. It's a shame that that one doctor took the only serum we had to fix it though, and we've yet to create another. Harry said with mock disappointment. Oh well, Nero, go prep a table. Harry said, waving his hand dismissively, a doctor behind him nodding and turning to leave. Ace and Sabo's eyes widened. Wait. Sabo shouted, looking at Luffy who looked like he wanted to be anywhere but there. We'll fight. Sabo said softly. Fighting was simple enough, and before they knew it the brothers were back to their normal strength. Eventually the doctors felt that they had peaked and began getting more creative with their fights. At first it started with obstacles, or rules. Can't fight with your right hand, have to spin around 10 times every 10 minutes, or even fight with a blindfold on. It made the fights more challenging, but it made them more annoying too. One day, though, Harris seemed extra excited about the sparring match. 11,062, 11,085, 11,097, I'd like you to meet 11,053. Harris said, gesturing to a timid-looking boy who had the usual tattered clothing on. His hair was unwashed and unkempt, and Sabo wondered if his hair really was a weird brown color, or if it was all the dirt. I hope you four have a wonderful spar. Harris said, turning and hastily leaving the room, much to their confusion. Before they could overthink the situation they were ordered to begin the match, so the brothers did without any hesitation. They couldn't afford it, not when Harry was one more step away from practically killing the three of them. The fight started out normal enough, and 11,053 began to put up a decent fight. Along with the incentive of actually living the doctors promised that anyone who beat the three brothers during sparring, would win immediate freedom. No one knew if it was true or not, and as much as the brothers wanted to let them escape, they knew they couldn't. Now, more than ever, Harry was watching their every move for signs of losing on purpose. The fight continued, with relative ease, and before the three-minute mark the brothers thought the fight would be over. They were mistaken. Out of nowhere 11,053 disappeared from sight, confusing the brothers as they began wondering where he went. Oi, what happened? 
Ace shouted at one of the cameras, knowing the doctors had something to do with this. When he didn't get a response Ace growled, regrouping with Sabo and Luffy, the three standing with their backs together, glancing round for the boy. Suddenly, Sabo made a sound as he bent over, grabbing at his stomach with a pained expression. Sabo. Ace and Luffy shouted, confused and worried, but before they could make it to their brother, they were sent flying backwards. What the hell? Ace shouted, jumping back up to his feet, seeing Luffy do the same. Sabo seemed to be recovering from whatever happened to him, but before more could be said they were attacked again. First it was Luffy, the youngest being thrown around a few times, then Ace, the same happening to him, except it actually hurt. Sabo was next, but before too much could happen Luffy was flinging an arm toward him, confusing Ace until 11,053 was suddenly there. Got you? Luffy shouted, letting his body fly towards his arm. 11,053 looked startled, not expecting to be caught, but before he could even move Luffy reached him, slamming his fist into the boy's face, knocking him out. Finished. Congratulations, you all get some bread with your dinner tonight. Harry said excitedly, walking into the room and clapping. That was the only good thing about sparring. They got bread. They were taken back to their cell with shackles on, an extra precaution that the doctors took seeing as they were now much stronger than before, and thrown in without much more said. Their shackles were taken off and they were left to their own devices. Ace and Sabo immediately turned to Luffy, rubbing their fingers together to get Luffy's attention, the youngest having gone into the corner to draw with the chalk. Luffy, how did you do that? Sabo asked, moving to sit in front of him with Ace. Luffy shrugged, not looking up from his drawing, no expression on his face as he signed back. I don't know. I just did. Sabo sighed, but Ace seemed determined to know, no matter how long it took. Yeah, but we couldn't see him, and then you suddenly just had him. Ace sighed. Luffy pouted, still not looking up. It wasn't that hard, he was just moving really fast, so I grabbed him. Luffy signed back slowly. Ace and Sabo glanced at each other before nodding. The job Lou. Sabo signed, patting Luffy on the back. Luffy looked up, staring for a second before smiling. Thanks Sabo. Shishishi. The laugh was one they hadn't heard in a long time, and Sabo and Ace realized just how much they missed it. Speaking of Luffy doing good, you gotta catch up Ace, Luffy's been practicing his words. That's almost better than you at reading now. Sabo said with a grin. Luffy looked at Sabo, beaming, while Ace grumbled. Not my fault words are weird. Ace said, glaring at the word on the ground that Sabo had written out. It's not that hard Ace, just sound it out. Sabo encouraged. Ace sighed, looking at the word. Fine. Why out th? Ace asked, looking at Sabo who buzzed, shaking his head. Nope. Close though, you almost had it. The O and you here don't make the O sound. Try again. Sabo said while Luffy cheered in the background. Ace glared again but tried again. Why you youth? He asked, Sabo dinging and Luffy cheering. Ace smiled proudly, happy to have gotten the word right. Good job. You guys are getting really good now. We should try to get you to actually write words down. Sabo suggested, handing them both a piece of chalk. Ace scrunched his nose at the thought. What if I don't want to? Ace asked, glaring at the chalk, while Luffy grinned happily. Sabo laughed. Well, then Lu will know how to write and you won't. Sabo said, taking his own piece. Ace growled. No way. What do we do? Ace asked, suddenly ready to write. Sabo laughed and began teaching. We'll start simple, your names. Sabo said, writing out his own name. I want you two to try and sound them out and write which letter you think would fit. Sabo explained, the two nodding and beginning to write. It was sloppy, but expected. When they finished Luffy had ended up with Luffy, and Ace ended up with Ace. Sabo smiled. But try, both of you. Luffy, your name isn't spelled with those, it has a U in it, and there's another F in it. Like this. Sabo said, writing his brother's name down for him to see. Luffy smiled, nodding and rewriting it, while Sabo turned to Ace. And yours is pretty simple too. Instead of an S your name ends in C. Like this. Sabo said, writing Ace's name. The brothers continued practicing until dinner arrived, which they ate a bit slowly. Sleep came easy to the tired brothers, but after what felt like just falling asleep, they were once again waking up to the sound of the rolling cart, the one signaling that it was time for breakfast. They had only just barely finished eating before they were being called for testing. Once they were taken from their cell they were sent to the training room with two others this time, 11,009 and 11,028. They began sparring and, like last time, everything seemed normal until near the end when the two did something weird. 11,009 seemed stronger all of a sudden, while 11,028 looked as if all his wounds had healed in seconds. The brothers had a feeling that everyone they fought from now on would have weird abilities like this. Ace and Sabo took on the rapidly healing one, while Luffy took the strong one, all of them knowing that, if Luffy couldn't defeat him, then he would distract him. They could only fight with punches, not weapons, so there was no way that Luffy could be hurt too bad when fighting him. 
The plan worked for the most part, A. Sensabo eventually able to knock out 11,028, before he had a chance to heal himself, while Luffy was thrown back for the 20th time by 11,009. A. Sensabo rushed over to help, and the three of them eventually were able to take him down. They were congratulated and taken back to their cells with the promise of bread. What's with those guys? Why do they all suddenly have superpowers? A. signed in frustration. Sabo frowned, but shrugged, not quite sure himself. Maybe the doctors are trying new tests that affect someone's natural abilities. Enhancing them. Sabo signed back. This sucks. Those doctors can go to hell. Ace signed, infuriated. It made the fights harder to win, not to mention made them hurt the children more. Sabo sighed, turning to Luffy who was drawing. Hey Lou, whatcha drawing? Sabo asked, wanting to get his mind off of the dangerous tests the doctors were performing on everyone in the facility. Luffy looked up, eyes distant. I'm drawing Emily, she always liked my drawings. Luffy mumbled, continuing to scribble, and Sabo was sure that that was hair or maybe a dress. Sabo smiled lightly to Luffy, ruffling the boy's hair. Looks good Lou, I'm sure she's watching you right now thinking how amazing it looks. Sabo said softly, wondering if that really was the case, that Emily was watching over them, waiting for them to fulfill their promise to her. Sabo picked up his own piece of chalk and sat beside Luffy, drawing on the ground as well. Ace huffed, hating that he was suddenly by himself, and joined the two with his own chalk. It was a miracle they still had any chalk left after all the time they spent drawing. After a few minutes dinner came, with bread, and they ate slowly, all three still invested in their drawings to pay the disgusting food any mind. After some time passed they all slowly began finishing, ready to show off their drawings. Mine is all of us with Emily. And there's a candy she would always give us, and the chalk, and the mekins. Luffy rambled, pointing to each scribble and explaining what it was. Sabu smiled while Ace got ready to comment on how poorly drawn the picture was. Before he could even get a word out though, Sabo slapped his hand over Ace's mouth, grinning. It looks amazing Lou. Sabo prays, Luffy beaming with pride at the compliment. What did you draw Sabo? Luffy asked happily. Sabo smiled, looking at his own drawing, which wasn't as ambitious as Luffy's. Well, mine is something that represents all of us. I drew your hat, my hat, and Ace's pipe. Sabo said, pointing to the objects. Luffy's eyes sparkled. Wow. That's so cool. No, Ace, you should get a hat Luffy said, more of an afterthought as he looked at the drawing. Sabo laughed while Ace pouted. Just cause you two got hats doesn't mean I need one too. Ace said, crossing his arms and puffing out his cheeks. But it would be so cool. We'd all have hats then. Luffy said happily, looking over at his own hat that had stayed in the corner ever since they got there. Luffy hadn't put it on once since they were in the facility, and Sabo didn't know if it was because he didn't want to lose it, or if he didn't like it anymore. He didn't think Luffy would ever not like that hat, especially when he told Ace and Sabo about how precious it was to him practically every day when they lived in the forest. I look just fine without one, Ace said. Sabo laughed some more before calming down. So what did you draw Ace? He asked, glancing at the eldest brother's drawing, slightly confused by it. Ace grinned excitedly, gesturing down at his drawing. Me beating up all those damn doctors obviously, Ace said proudly. Luffy you did not at the picture as Ace described in detail exactly what was happening. As he finished up his explanation Luffy yawned loudly, rubbing his eyes. I guess it's time to go to sleep, huh? Sabo asked, glancing outside their cell where the sounds of pain had quieted down some, indicating that many were asleep. Luffy nodded and the brothers all laid down in their usual formation, ace in the middle as a pillow for the other two, before drifting off. Chapter 8. See no evil, hear no evil. Ever since the doctors started enhancing the other subjects' abilities it only got harder and harder to fight against them. Sometimes they would even have the brothers fight by themselves, only taking one brother to fight, and leaving the other two in the cell. They hadn't been strapped down to take any tests in months, but everything comes to an end eventually. Normal testing day everybody. 11,061, 11,002, 11,058. The brothers exchanged glances, confused. Normal testing. When was the last time we did that? They signed in confusion. And why all of a sudden? Sabo signed back, not having any answers. Luffy was frowning, stomach churning in nervousness, not liking the feeling he was getting. Finally, Hare got to their cell, calling out their numbers, doctors coming in and shackling them, sending everyone in a line to the lab to be tested on. They were all strapped down, and Sabo remembered how horrible this room was. Ace was glaring, per usual, at everyone who came into view, Luffy was staring at the ground, devoid of emotion, and Sabo was glancing at everything and everyone, wondering what the first test was going to be. The next few hours were the worst torture the brothers had experienced yet. It seemed like every minute was an hour as needles poked, scalpels cut, lights blinded, and before any of them knew it, they were being moved to tables, doctors surrounding them and murmuring to each other excitedly. None of them could make out what they were saying, their voices seeming far away and muffled like they were talking to them from underwater. Ace's eyes felt strained, and the light only further hurt them. 
The ache to close them would rub them, but the doctors were doing something to them, forcing them to stay open. The pain was excruciating, never-ending. Sabo was in much the same boat when it came to pain, but his was in his ears. It was like having an ear infection, every noise around you only making them hurt more, the pain feeling as if it's inside your ear, where you can't do anything to make it feel better. Everyone talking around him amplified the feeling, making it seem like thousands of bees buzzing and stinging in his ears. His arms were restrained, keeping him from trying to cover them from the noise. Luffy was staring at the ceiling, trying to imagine himself anywhere but here. The ceiling was such a bright white like he remembered the clouds to be outside. He couldn't quite remember the feeling of being outside anymore though, having been stuck inside a basement for too long. He couldn't remember what the sun felt like, what warmth felt like, what the breeze from the sea felt like. He longed for one more day outside, to feel the sun, hear the ocean, smell the salty air, but he was stuck here, where the only thing he could smell was the same antiseptic smell of the lab. His nose felt like it was on fire from the smell, giving him a headache. The alcohol smell burned his nose, and the feeling only worsened the ache. He scrunched his nose, trying to relieve some of the burning sensation from it. It didn't help. Everything's moving along well. A voice sat behind the brother's head. Doctors got closer and continued doing their experiments, sending different waves of pain through the brothers. Eventually, they were taken off the tables and taken back to their cells. The three looked worse than normal, bandages wrapped around their limbs from all the wounds, but there were bandages around their faces as well. Acid gauze wrapped around his eyes, freaking him out a bit, while Sabo had patches over his ears, making everything still sound muffled and far away, and Luffy had tissue in his nose and a strip of bandage over the bridge of his nose. What's going on? Why can't I see? What's wrapped around my eyes? Ace asked, moving to claw off his bandages. Sabo stopped him, grabbing his arms before he damaged anything. Don't. We don't know what they did to your eyes. The best thing you can do right now is leave those on. Sabo said, his voice sounding quiet, though he thought he was talking normally. Stop screaming, I'm not gonna take him off. Ace said, and Sabo was sure if he could he would be glaring at him. I didn't know I was shouting, I can barely hear anything. I've got patches on my ears. Sabo explained, grimacing as he touched the patch lightly. He turned to Luffy. They did something to Luffy's nose too, Sabo explained to their now blind brother. What? Is it broken or something? Ace asked, annoyed that he couldn't see for himself. Sabo shook his head. I don't think so. Luffy, does your nose hurt? Sabo asked. Luffy made a thinking face before shrugging. Not really everything smells weird though, Luffy said, his voice sounding weird due to the tissue in his nose. I'm surprised you smell anything with all that tissue, Sabo said, assessing the damage between all of them. They look worse for wear, but they would pull through. I swear, if those bastards made me blind they're gonna regret it. Ace said, sitting with a huff. Sabo left him alone, letting the oldest stew in anger alone, while he moved to sit with Luffy who was being silent. What's blind mean? Luffy signed to Sabo, not wanting Ace to know what he asked. He could tell Ace was angry, and he didn't want to upset him more. Sabo frowned at the question, glancing at Ace. It means never being able to see from your eyes. It's like having your eyes closed forever and never getting to open them again. Sabo signed back. Luffy frowned, looking down at the floor after getting the answer. I hope Ace isn't blind then. Luffy signed slowly, expression sad. Sabo frowned, putting an arm around the youngest and pulling him close. I hope so too Lu. Unwrap the bandages. Ace stayed silent as the doctors around him began to unwrap the bandages around his eyes. His eyes were closed, and he could only sit and hope that his sight was still there. After breakfast the next day, which had been a whole ordeal in of itself, Ace had immediately been taken to the lab to be tested on. Except, he had been the only one taken. He had to listen as Haru came into the hall, practically singing his number before dragging him out of his cell and to the lab. Nobody else's number was called, and they were the only two walking, so Ace assumed he was the only test subject there that morning. Bandages removed. 11,062, open your eyes. The sentence was said in complete monotone, giving an almost bored impression. Ace began to open his eyes but Heston pain at the intensely bright lights. Light sensitivity. Sight appears to be intact. The same voice continued to speak as lights flashed in his face. He squinted, blinking rapidly and trying to fight an oncoming headache to no avail. Eventually, he was able to adjust to the lighting without having to squint or blink too rapidly. Everything looked a little weird off. He didn't know how though, it just seemed sharper. Before he could think too much on it someone was holding up an eye chart test a few feet away from him. Alright 11062, read the third line. Ace gave them a confused look, but turned to face the chart anyways. It was best just to do what they said, something he learned the hard way over the years. C, H, K, R, B, D. He mumbled out, not wanting to participate, though was practically forced to. Good. The doctor said, nodding as they scribbled on their clipboard. Eventually, they turned to the one holding to the chart, nodding, and the person moved to the other side of the room. Read the last line. 
Ace was about to yell that nobody could read the tiny line from that far away, but as Ace looked back at the test, he saw that he could clearly see what the line said. E K N T W U L J S P X D M R A H C F O Y C G. Ace recited, amazed with himself that he could see them so well. The doctors around him whispered to each other in what seemed to be happiness. The doctor in charge scribbled some more stuff down, turning to a doctor near the door. Lights off. As this was said everyone put on some weird glasses and the lights shut off, reminding Ace of the glasses Emily told them about that let the doctor see in the dark. Read the second to last line. Ace was just as amazed as before to see that he could clearly read the line, especially in the dark. He looked around the room in amazement after seeing the line, ignoring the doctor's happy chatter. Everything looked the same as if the light was on, except it was like everything was under a shady tree, or like he was wearing sunglasses. They made Ace read a few more things in the dark, and when he finished that they deemed his testing done, taking him back to his cell where his brothers were waiting. 11,097, you're next. Luffy was taken off to the lab before they could even say a word to each other. What happened? Sabo signed, worried for his brothers. He saw that Ace didn't have the bandage around his eyes, and hoped that meant Ace could see. He was relieved when Ace signed back. I can see everything. I can even see in the dark. Ace said, grinning happily. If he had to go through all the painful testing, then he could at least be happy when the outcome gave him cool powers. Really? Sabo signed back in shock. Ace nodded and looked down the hole. Not only the brothers couldn't see what was down there due to the lack of lighting, but it was clear as day for Ace. Yeah, I can see all the way to the end of the hole. Ace signed, turning back to face Sabo. Sabo smiled back happily. Well, that solves one of the problems with our plan. Luffy was strapped to his usual seat, hair standing in front of him with a big smile on his face, as he removed the gauze and tissue from his nose. Luffy couldn't even think straight when a wave of smells bombarded his nose. The antiseptic smell was there, like always, but much stronger than usual, as if they were holding it under his nose. He could also smell hundreds of other things, but he couldn't place them. Smell this, hair said, shoving something on a plastic tray in front of his face. He did as told, smelling the small specks of something, reeling at the intense wave of onion. He scrunched his nose up and tried moving away from the smell, already getting a headache. Harris seemed pleased by the reaction and withdrew the tray, replacing it with another, and having Luffy repeat the process a few times. Now, I'm going to place this chocolate in one of these cups. All you have to do is tell me which one it's under and you can have it. Harris said, showing him a small ball of chocolate. The smell of it wafted over to Luffy, making his stomach growl hungrily. He hadn't had chocolate since Emily snuck him some. Luffy nodded and suddenly he was blindfolded. He heard the cups moving around a few times, and then the blindfold was gone, the doctors looking at him with expectedness. Luffy could still smell the chocolate, not paying much mind to how he could smell it, but noticed it was coming more from the left, rather than from the other cups. That one, Luffy mumbled, gesturing with his head since his hands were bound. Her smiled, lifting the cup, revealing the chocolate which she gave to Luffy. Good. Fantastic. Again, they continued this test a few times, adding more cups to the mix, moving the cups all around the room, keeping Luffy blindfolded, anything they could think of until they felt they were done. Luffy was sent back to the cell, and Sabo was taken to the lab, leaving Ace and Luffy alone. What did they do to you, Lou? Ace signed. Luffy shrugged, not really knowing himself. I dunno, they just made me small things and find chocolate under cups. It was easy, and it only gave me a little bit of a headache. Luffy signed, counting the day as a win. It was the first time he hadn't been forced under a large amount of pain during testing. While Luffy was gone Ace and Sabo had discussed what the doctors could be up to, deciding that they were messing with their senses like they messed with the other test subjects. Luffy now had a stronger sense of smell, and Ace had better vision. They figured that, since Sabo's ears were bandaged, they had tried to give Sabo better hearing too. Ace pushed those thoughts aside, turning to Luffy. Well, I can see in the dark, which is much cooler than smelling chocolate under a cup. Ace signed smugly, causing Luffy to pout. Nua, mine is cooler. I got to eat chocolate. Luffy signed back in his defense. Ace felt a little jealous at that, wanting to taste something that wasn't green garbage. Well, I'm stronger. You can still barely aim straight. Ace signed indignantly. Luffy huffed. Sure, he couldn't aim completely straight yet, but it was better than two years ago when he could barely aim in front of himself. You're a meanie. Sabo's nicer. Luffy signed in anger. Ace scowled at him, hitting him on the head. Luffy whined, holding his head and pouting at Ace. He is not. Ace signed, nearly shouting instead. Luffy stuck his tongue out at Ace. Is too. Is not. Is too. Left. Beep. Left. Beep. Right. Beep. Left. Sabo and Ace had been right when they assumed that his hearing would be better. Once the doctors had taken off the patches he could suddenly hear everyone and everything much better. Even when the doctors were muttering to each other, it sounded as if they were talking right in his ear. 
They had immediately begun testing on him, blindfolding him and telling him to tell them where the beep was coming from, the left or the right. The beep got quieter and quieter each time, and Sabo couldn't help but wonder what it would sound like if his ears weren't enhanced. Amazing, his hearing goes beyond any normal human's hearing. He can detect frequencies too high for normal ears. A doctor muttered in excitement. Not only that, everything is amplified for him too. I bet he could hear a mouse squeaking upstairs from his cell. Another said, just as excited. This continued for a bit until Sabo was sent back to his cell with his brothers, the two turning to him expectantly. Sabo smiled. I could hear your fighting from the lab. Sabo said, crossing his arms. Ace rolled his eyes and Luffy pouted. Ace was being mean. Was not. Was to. Was. Alright, that's enough. Seriously, can't you two just get along? Sabo signed, shaking his head and sitting down with them. Ace and Luffy both decided to pout for a minute, leaving the cell in silence. So we all got cool powers then. Well, except for Luffy. Ace signed, confusing Sabo. Was Luffy's smell the same? My power is cool. I got so much chocolate from it too. Tell him Sabo, smelling everything is cool too. Luffy signed, and you could practically hear the wine. Sabo smiled at that, laughing. It's cool you. Sabo assured, causing Luffy to cheer. Told you. Ah, but you guys really smell Luffy signed, scrunching his nose up at the awful odor that came from his brothers. See, not cool. Ace signed. Luffy glowered at him, crossing his arms. After they were given their different powers, they were sent right back to the training room where they were forced to show off their powers. They would have them fight in the dark, forcing Ace to use his night vision, or forcing Sabo to listen for where his opponent was moving. Luffy would have to smell and soon realize that he could track people with their smell, making it easy to fight in the dark, as if he was fighting with the lights on. Fighting became much easier, and the brothers soon adjusted to their unnaturally high senses, the sounds and smells no longer giving Sabo and Luffy headaches, and the bright lights of the lab and training room, no longer making Ace squint. Their cells still sucked though. It was still cold, still empty, still filled with the sound of other children's pain, sometimes their own. Now that Ace can't see in the dark we shouldn't have a problem navigating through the maze. Now, all we need to worry about is taking down all the guards, as well as find a way out of our cell. Sabo signed, the brothers smiling. They were one step closer to getting out of this cell, and it was, ironically, thanks to the doctor's tests. We're stronger, we can beat the guards down. Ace signed with a determined glint in his eye. Sabo sighed. I'm sure we'll have to resort to that, but I'd much rather have a plan before we run blindly into them and get caught. We won't have a second chance at escape. Sabo signed, calming his trigger-happy brother. Ace nodded in understanding. Luffy was watching, reading everything Sabo and Ace signed, but deciding not to say anything. He wasn't good at planning like Ace, and Sabo were so he would leave all of that to them. Our best bet is Sabo suddenly stopped signing, looking out into the darkness of the hallway. What is it? Ace signed in confusion, not hearing anything, but with his brother's new ability that meant nothing. Luffy watched, interspeaking as well. I hear the food cart and keys. I think the door down there is locked. Sabo signed, hearing the keys unlock the door and a food cart rolling into the hallway. That's just great. Ace signed in exasperation, throwing his arms up in the air. At least we know now. This means we should wait until someone who has the keys comes by, like the food guy. Sabo signed. Ace huffed but nodded. Food came around to everyone's cell and Luffy gagged, holding his bowl away from his face. It smells B-A-A-D-D Luffy signed, putting his bowl on the floor and making another gagging noise. Told you your power was stupid. Is not. Is too. Ages. Ace, Sabo 13. Luffy 10. Ace and Sabo were officially teenagers now. The three brothers had been trapped in the facility for three years now. Escape was practically within their reach, yet it was so far away at the same time. Nothing changed in the year that they spent in their cell. The most exciting thing that happened was that one of the test subjects from a few months back had tried rebelling against the doctors, and even managed to give Harry a good punch. The doctor had a bruise on his face for weeks. Other than that, things were boring. Lately, though, the doctors seemed to be extra happy about something. What? The brothers had no clue. The doctors wouldn't talk about what it was near Sabo so he couldn't listen in, and there weren't any changes in the tests they did or who they had to spar against. Today, the doctors were extra excited. Sabo barely had time to warn his brothers that someone was coming when the sound of high heels moved quickly, almost at a run, down the hall. A female doctor appeared in front of their cell, a wide grin on her face. Subject 11062, it's time for testing. She announced the words in a rush, unlocking the cell quickly and handcuffing Ace, practically dragging him out of the cell and down the hall. Ace was barely able to give his brothers a confused glance before they were in the lab, and he was strapped to a chair. No one even bothered looking at Ace for a few minutes as they grouped up, bright smiles on all their faces which unnerved Ace. He didn't know what was happening, but he had a feeling he might not like it. After a few moments passed the door opened, and Harry walked in with an equally happy grin as the others. 
He was holding a small black box in his hand and was walking briskly into the room, one of the nurses closing the door behind him. Welcome 11,062. It's time for your true testing to begin. Harry announced happily, confusing Ace. True testing. What was all the stuff before now if it wasn't true testing? To answer his question Harry opened the box, unveiling a strange fruit. It had swirls all over it and was orange, resembling fire almost. Ace wanted to question what was happening, but never had the chance as Harry took a chunk out of the fruit and shoved it into Ace's mouth. Jung Ace grimaced at the horrible taste, like wet ashes left in the great terminal for five years. After he swallowed he looked at the doctors expectantly, waiting for something to happen. It was almost anticlimactic. Everyone just stared at him and he waited, thinking he might feel differently. Was this a weird test? Were they waiting for him to fall over and die? Was it poison? Ace didn't even have time to react when the bang went off. Everyone's head swiveled to the lab where a loud bang came from. Sabo and Luffy sat up in surprise, their eyes wide. Sabo? Luffy asked softly. Sabo had a feeling he knew what that sound was, and he did not like the thoughts that came with him. It's fine Luffy, that was probably nothing. Sabo didn't know if he was trying to convince Luffy or himself. The pain in his shoulder clouded everything else. He couldn't even think due to shock and his eyes were wide, skin a shade paler. He was just shot. Harry stared at him with a wicked grin, and Ace was sure he was speaking because his lips were moving, but he couldn't hear anything except for a ringing in his ears. He wasn't dead yet, but the gun was still in Harry's hand, and from the looks of it, he was getting ready to aim at his opposite arm now. Just as the ringing started to die down another shot went off, and this time the pain was worse, more noticeable. Ace looked at the wound, watching the blood that quickly began cascading down his arm, and onto the chair he was strapped in. He didn't know if that weird groan came from him or if he imagined it. Looking back at Harry only made the shock return. He was raising the gun for the third time, but this time, instead of aiming for his arms, or even legs, he was aiming right for his chest. He was about to die. Ace couldn't die, he had to protect Luffy and Sabo from these crazy bastards, not to mention get them out. But as he watched Harry's finger slowly pull the trigger, he couldn't help but feel a strange sense of calm and happiness. He was going to die. The spawn of the devil would finally be gone, and he wouldn't ruin anyone else's life anymore just from his existence. Ace was almost hoping that the gun would go off and kill him, and when the loud bang went off again, he closed his eyes in preparation. But he didn't feel pain. He waited, thinking it would take a minute from shock, but when he felt nothing but a weird tingling, he looked to see no wound, no blood, but instead, fire. There was a hole but it was slowly closing, the inside made of fire that was tangling itself together. Ace stared in wonder as the ringing in his ears dimmed again, cluing him in on the doctors talking. It took longer for the loja to take effect. Ace was confused, and even a slight bit disappointed. Wasn't he just shot? How was he alive? And how had his chest been on fire? Ace was still in too much shock to think clearly. He was numb to the world, almost angry that he hadn't died then. What had happened though? Was it a devil fruit? Whatever hair fed him did taste awful like Luffy had said when talking about his, but what was it? Fire. Was he a fireman now? He had to admit, that was kind of cool, but Ace didn't know how he felt about being forced to eat a devil fruit. That meant he couldn't swim right. Couldn't save Luffy. Man, Sabo is going to be pissed when he finds out he has to save Luffy on his own. The doctors continued to perform a few more tests on him before they seemed satisfied, patching up his arms and sending him back to his cell. Instead of the normal shackles though, they put sea stone ones on him, making it hard for Ace to walk straight. After what seemed to be hours they reached the cell and Ace was tossed in, the doctor rushing off after locking the door. Ace. Sabo and Luffy both shouted his name, happy he was back. They both ran over to him, Luffy hugging him tightly, much to his discomfort. Ace groaned. Not so tight, arms hurt Ace mumbled, hiding the wince. Luffy immediately lets go and Ace could see he was fighting back tears. Ever since they had made their promises Luffy hadn't cried once, though he'd gotten very close to it many times before. I'm fine, calm down, my arms are killing me though. Ace groaned, even talking taking a lot of energy. Be but Ace glared at Luffy. You didn't think I was dead did you? Ace asked harshly, Luffy looking down. But there were loud noises, and Sabo said you would be fine, but I was scared and. Well I'm not dead, so it's fine. Besides, I couldn't leave a weak little brother like you alone with Sabo. Ace said, trying for indifference, but feeling slightly happy. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Sabo asked, angry. Ace scoffed. You two are younger than me, so I gotta be alive to watch over you two, that's all. Ace said, trying to stand but wobbling dangerously and falling back to the floor. Whoa. Careful Ace. Who's watching over here now? Sabo asked smugly, helping Ace stand. Ace glared at him, shaking his wrists where the shackles jangled together. It's these stupid cuffs. They're making me all weak. Ace growled in annoyance. Sabo eyed the cuffs curiously. What are they? Sabo asked, knocking slightly against one as he helped move Ace to sit against the wall, Luffy following. Seasone, I think. 
Ace mumbled out. See so. But that only affects devil fruit users, right? Sabo asked, remembering when Luffy had sea stone in his system. Ace scowled. Yeah, it does. Ace re But then that means, a slow realization came over Sabo's face, but Luffy remained completely clueless, waiting for someone to explain. That's why they were so excited, Sabo said. Ace nodded, glaring at his cuffs. What? Luffy asked after realizing no one was going to tell him. Sabo didn't even look at Luffy, eyes still focused on Ace. You've got a devil fruit. Sabo practically shouted. Ace's scowl deepened. Yeah, and it tasted like shit too. Ace growled out. Luffy, finally putting the pieces together, grinned. That's so cool. What can you do? Luffy asked, Sabo wondering as well. Ace shrugged. Dunno. They didn't exactly give me a rundown of my powers. Ace said, Sabo raising an eyebrow at the comment. Then what did they do? He asked. The oldest brother looked away. Tess Ace said after a minute. Sabo wasn't accepting that as an answer though. Like... The blonde questioned slowly. Ace frowned. Well they shot me Ace said, almost too quiet for Sabo to hear, but he did, Luffy as well. What? Sabo and Luffy's shouts were simultaneous, both with white eyes and jaws dropped. It's no big deal. I'm fine, right? Ace asked. Sabo sputtered. And not a big they shot you. It's a very big deal Ace. Sabo shouted, and Luffy looked on the verge of tears again. But I'm fine. Luffy, don't you dare start crying. Ace shouted, suddenly angry. Sabo glared at the eldest, resisting the urge to punch him. Ace, you may not care that you almost died, but Luffy and I most certainly do. The more he talked the louder the blonde got, making Ace wince. Why do you care so much anyway? I shouldn't even be born to begin with. Ace shouted back in a snarl. Sabo's eyes widened for a second before turning into a harsh glare. Oh no. Not this again. We care because we're your brothers Ace. We're your family. Of course, we would care if you died. Sabo shouted. Luffy's lip was trembling, but no tears fell. Ace I don't want you to die either, Luffy said pain in his voice that broke the brothers' hearts. I don't want you to die because if you died then it would be lonely without you, and Sabo and I would be sad, and I wouldn't have you teaching me to aim better, and I wouldn't be able to beat you up, and... I get it Lou. Ace said, cutting Luffy off from his rambling. Everyone went silent, all of them trying to calm down. Ace promise you'll never die, never ever. Luffy requested softly. Both brothers stayed silent, Sabo's eyes softening. Idiot, of course I won't die, like I said, someone needs to protect a weakling of a brother like you. Ace said determinedly. Sabo smiled, shaking his head. No one really knew what to say after that, so they didn't say anything at all. It was almost time for dinner so it wasn't a surprise when the doors opened at the end of the hall, and the food cart began rolling their way, Sabo telling the others through signs. So, we never did find out. What's your power? Sabo asked as they ate their food. Ace shrugged. I don't know. Like I said, they didn't give me a rundown, but when they shot me the last time it didn't hurt me. I saw where there was supposed to be blood and stuff, but it was just a hole. I think I'm made of fire now. Ace said, shocking his brothers. Fire? Huh? Sabo asked, thinking. Luffy grinned. That's so cool. Can you make fire oh? Can you eat fire? Can you shoot fire? Can you? We don't know Luffy, remember? He didn't get to try it out, Sabo said before Ace could get annoyed with all the questions. Luffy pouted for a second but quickly got over it, smiling again and nodding in understanding. I think I remember reading about a fire fruit though. If your body turned into fire instead of staying solid that might mean you're a loja. Sabo said, finger on chin as he thought. Ace nodded in confirmation. The doctor said something like that, loja. Ace said, trying to remember exactly what they'd said, but everything had happened so fast he couldn't quite remember. Sabo nodded. Well, it could be the Mare Mare no Mi. It's a loja and, basically, you're a fireman, like Luffy's a rubber man. Sabo explained, thinking back to the book on devil fruits he had read after finding out Luffy was a rubber man. Ace grinned, obviously liking the idea. Way cooler than some dumb rubber power. Sabo frowned, but continued talking, cutting off Luffy who was about to begin arguing. It means you can control fire now, create it, and even become it, like when they shot you. You became fire. If someone tried cutting you I'm pretty sure you just become fire too. Sabo explained. Ace nodded, trying to take in all the information. Begin the next test. Even though Ace now had devil fruit powers the testing had continued like normal, random doctors doing random injections, or sometimes cuts. Ace was permanently cuffed with sea stone unless they were in the training room, and even then they were extremely cautious when getting him out, making sure to spray some weird mist that Sabo deduced must be sea stone, weakening him and Luffy enough that they could come in and cuff him. They didn't believe Luffy was enough of a threat to keep him cuffed with the sea stone. At the moment Ace was strapped to a table, staring at the ceiling as the doctors poked and prodded at the bullet wounds in his shoulder and arm. It's amazing. Even with sea stone, his healing has been sped up, even if just slightly. I bet if he didn't have the sea stone on it would practically be miraculous. The excited chatter in his ear only annoyed Ace. 
Maybe we can try tests to speed it up, with or without sea stone. You mean like subject 11,028? Yes, but let's try keeping this one alive. 11,028 healed too fast and regenerated cells too quickly, ending in his termination. You're right, we need to make sure he heals fast, but not too fast. I'll get the needles. Ace groaned at the mention of the dreaded needles. One of the doctors rushed off while Ace stared at the ceiling. It would be kind of cool to heal even faster than he normally does, but he didn't really want to pay the price for it. His doctors moved away from his table, waiting for needles, giving Ace a chance to check on his brothers. Luffy was still strapped to a chair, Harry hovering around him and making him do different tests. The youngest of the three did as he was told with a cold despondent look that made Ace shiver. Prying his eyes away from Luffy, he turned to look at Sabo who was strapped to a table beside him, doctors around him injecting different serums into his arms. He could barely even see the hint of blonde from his hair, with the number of doctors swarmed around him like bees to flowers. Test number 981,189,260 has been successfully injected. Test number 420,375,631 injected and successful. Test number 897,423,876 has been injected as well. With his own doctors away Ace could hear the doctors working on Sabo much clearer than before. Temperature spiking. Symptoms include shakes, chills, and unconsciousness. Huck him up, he's failing. Ace didn't know what they were talking about, but there was an urgency in the doctor's tones that unsettled Ace. All the other doctors in the room turned to Sabo's table, including Hare. Ace started to realize this might be bad. Fading fast. Idols dropping. BP falling. The words buzzed around Ace as he tried to get a better view of his brother, but there were too many people surrounding him. Send the others out. Had him three years now. Dying. The last word caught Ace's attention, the gravity of the situation hitting him full force as some doctors moved, unstrapping other test subjects, himself and Luffy included. Hey, wait. Sabo. What did you bastards do to Sabo? Ace shouted, trying to fight against the doctor holding him, not able to do much due to the sea stone. Luffy was beside him, being pulled out, watching Ace with fear in his eyes. Heart rate slowing. Let me go you damn bastard. Ace growled out, trying to fight his way into the lab, but the door was shut in his face. What he wouldn't give to have Sabo's good hearing, to know what those doctors were talking about. Sabo was the smart one, he'd know what all that stuff meant, but Ace was smart enough to know it wasn't good stuff, that Sabo wasn't doing so hot in there. Ace and Luffy were dragged back to their cell, Ace stumbling to the bars to try and see what was happening, but it was no use. Doctors who were escorting other subjects to their cells, were quickly rushing back into the lab without a second glance their way. Hey Ace, what's happening? Luffy asked. The youngest didn't know anything about what the doctors were saying, not sure what a BP was or vitals, but the way they were talking gave Luffy enough of an idea to be worried for his blonde brother. Ace turned to him but wasn't sure what to say. It's fine. Nothing's wrong. Ace grit out, very obviously lying. Even Luffy knew as much, but he forced himself to believe Ace, huddling next to his brother, close to the bars. It seemed like hours passed, and maybe it had been, but the brothers never left the bars, waiting, hoping, praying to God they didn't know if they believed in or not, that Sabo would come out okay. Dinner came and the two picked at the soup, not in the mood to eat. Eventually, the two got too tired, huddling together for both the comfort and the warmth. Ace? Hmm. They are really warm Luffy mumbled, snuggling into Ace. Like a fire Luffy muttered, causing Ace to smile. I made a fire Luffy, that's why. Ace said, noticing that, since he'd gotten his fruit he'd been a pleasantly warm, a harsh contrast to the cold he remembered the cell being. It's nice I don't like the cold Luffy said, burying further into Ace. Ace wrapped an arm around Luffy, not bothering to reply since he heard snores. If all Ace could do was warm his brother up, he would do it. Boy, breakfast. The harsh voice came from outside their cell, rousing the two. Ace was groggy but watched as the man practically dropped their soup into their cell before stalking off. What was happening? Normally Sabo woke them up before breakfast came, but as he scanned the cell there was no blonde brother with them. Confused Ace looked at Luffy who was rubbing the sleep from his eyes, expression equally confused. Wah wow, where's Sabo? Luffy asked, groggy. Ace's eyebrows knitted, not quite sure himself until the memories of the previous day came back and his blood ran cold. Sabo. Ace practically shouted, gripping the bars and looking down the hall. He knew what the doctors were saying was bad, but why wasn't Sabo back yet? Shouldn't they have fixed him? Maybe they were making sure he was really okay before sending him back to the cell. Ace tried reasoning, not even daring to think of the grim alternative. Because Sabo couldn't be dead right. Ace shook the thought out immediately, not even daring to think about it more. Luffy still didn't seem to remember, and Ace was going to keep it that way as long as he could. Sabo was normally the one who took care of Luffy, he was better at being nice, and always knew how to react to Luffy's different moods. 
He was a patient brother, Ace was the temperamental brother, Sabo was nice, Ace was easily annoyed, and when annoyed he got mad, and when mad he got mean. Sabo knew how to control his emotions. Ace did not. So while Luffy slowly got the same look he got in the labs, the same despondent look, Ace began to freak out, not sure what to do. H. Hey Lu, why don't we play game? Ace asked, unsure of really what to do in this situation. He wasn't good with emotions, and it took all of his efforts not to yell at Luffy. The game? Luffy asked softly, looking over at Ace. Ace nodded. Yeah. We could play tic-tac-toe, or maybe even dots and boxes. Ace suggested. Luffy seemed hesitant. But Luffy stopped talking, and it took everything within Ace to not shout at him, not tell him to spit it out. He had to be nicer because Sabo was gone, and they had agreed to keep Luffy happy as much as they could. What is it Lou? Ace asked, trying to keep the annoyance from his tone. Luffy hesitated again, glancing from him to the ground. W what what about Sabo? Luffy asked, voice getting softer with each word. Ace's lips thinned, but he shook his head, taking a deep breath. I'm sure he's fine, the doctors are probably making sure he's really okay before sending him back here. Ace said, moving to grab some chalk. So, wanna play? Time passed slowly. Too slowly. The brothers played tic-tac-toe for a bit, and it seemed to distract Luffy a little, but Ace only grew more anxious with each passing minute. They hadn't seen a single doctor besides the one who gave them food, and no one had come to take anyone to the lab for tests or training. It was unsettling, but Ace tried not to think about it. Eventually, the brothers got tired of tic-tac-toe and moved on to dots and boxes, and then hangman. After some time the two ran out of games to play, and Ace began to panic. Sabo still wasn't back, and Luffy would only be in a good mood until he remembered that fact. Why don't we practice our words? I bet I could write more than you. Ace challenged suddenly. Luffy blinked, registering the words, and grinning, nodding. Yeah. But I'm gonna win. Ace sighed in relief, the two haphazardly scribbling words down. Lunch came and passed. No Sabo. Ace didn't know when it would be an appropriate time to start freaking out and trying to bust the bars to get to Sabo. His wrists hurt from all the writing he was doing, the tough stone rubbing against his skin, but he kept at it, refusing to let Luffy worry. Then dinner came, and Ace could barely hold the chalk in his hand. Let's take a break Lou, eat some food. Ace said, his mood getting progressively worse when Sabo still wasn't showing up. Until the doctors said something, he would cling to the hope that Sabo was alive. Even if they told him told him he was dead Ace wouldn't believe them. Ace. The eldest looked over at Luffy who was pushing his soup around, staring at it intensely. Yeah. Luffy frowned, gripping the spoon tighter. Thank you for being nice and- Shut up Lou, jeez. Ace said with a faint blush, frowning. Luffy promptly stopped talking, not even looking at him. Ace sighed. Sorry it's gonna be fine Luffy. Besides, who said I was doing any of that stuff? Last I checked I wasn't in any pain, and I was only bored. Ace said, trying to play off his actions. Luffy stayed silent but eventually looked up at him, smiling. Normal testing resumes tomorrow. Hare's voice threw them off guard, the two abandoning their food and clinging to the bars, looking eagerly down the hall. Ace looked, seeing the bastard doctor walking towards them, and his eyes widened, a smile growing as relief filled him. Sabo was okay. You were dead Ace nearly shouted in shock, feeling like someone punched him in the gut. Sabo frowned, shushing him. Quiet. You'll wake Luffy. Sabo said. The three were laying down, Luffy already fast asleep on Ace's chest, Sabo laying beside him as he told him what happened. What do you mean you died? You're definitely not dead right Ace asked, ignoring the shushing. Sabo sighed, giving up, and nodding. I'm not dead Ace, but I did die. Whatever combination of drugs they gave me ended up slowing my heart down, and I was clinically dead for three minutes. That was yesterday though. They kept me there while they made sure the drugs left my system okay, and took notes on what was happening. They deemed me, not likely to die on my own so they sent me back here. Sabo explained while Ace seethed. I can't wait to beat him up. Ace growled. Sabo shook his head, settling his head on Ace's chest. You know, you like a heater now, Sabo said, completely changing the subject. Ace sputtered, not expecting the sudden change of topic. Yeah, well Luffy said that too. I am fire now after all. Ace mumbled, glad it was dark, so his brother didn't see his flushed cheeks. Sabo smiled. You did a good job distracting him, Sabo said. Ace raised an eyebrow. What are you talking about? Ace asked. There was no way Sabo could know about what they had been doing all day. Sabo laughed, tapping his ear. I could hear you you idiot. I've been awake all day. Ace was extremely glad it was dark. Well you know. You weren't here so someone had to keep him happy. Ace said defensively. Sabo continued laughing. I know that's stupid, it was a compliment. You did a good job. You should be the nice brother more often, it would put Lou more at ease. Sabo said. Ace merely grumbled. Sabo. Luffy's voice shocked the older brothers, all moving to look at the youngest who was staring at their cell bars. The Elu. Sabo asked, unsure how much Luffy had heard. 
Now that you thought about it, Luffy hadn't been snoring for a while now. I'm glad you're back even if you did die, you would never leave us Ace wouldn't either, Luffy said quietly, settling back down and closing his eyes. Ace and Sabo gaped at each other, shrugging and settling down as well. There was no point in replying to the comment, especially when the snores were back. Maybe he'll forget in the morning. Ace said, closing his own eyes. Sabo scoffed. This is Lou, he doesn't forget things like this. He's weird like that. Sabo said, closing his eyes as well. You got that right. Sabo smiled at Ace's grumble. Nisabo. Sabo almost sighed. He just wanted to sleep. Yeah. When Ace didn't reply he was ready to just fall asleep, thinking Ace must have passed out before he could answer. Just as he closed his eyes again he heard Ace speak. I'm glad you didn't die. Chapter 10. And we all fall down. Ages. Ace, Sabo 14. Luffy 11. Good job you two. I think you've both completely gotten the hang of it. Sabo said proudly, looking at the actually well-structured sentences that Ace and Luffy had written out in legible handwriting. Ace and Luffy beamed proudly. They were now onto their fourth year in the facility, barely having any time to practice reading and writing, but they had finally gotten there in the end. Over the last year, they were all tested and trained harder than ever. But Ace's new devil fruit, Sabo nearly dying, and Luffy's sudden adeptness with his devil fruit, the doctors were having a field day. Ace now had nearly full control over his fruit powers, able to create fire easily and direct it where he wanted it to go. He also found that he could do other cool things, like shoot fire out of his feet for a boost when jumping into the air when running. The doctors have also done an odd test on him, giving him fast regenerative abilities like they had done to the one child they had fraught. Instead of being able to heal wounds in seconds though, Ace was only able to heal much quicker than an average human, a deep cut healing within a few days rather than a week plus. Sabo was now much stronger than he used to be, but so were all the brothers, what with all their constant training and fighting. After he had died and come back to life, the doctors had taken an interest in trying to figure out what the repercussions would be on things like the brain, muscles, senses, etc. His hearing remained as it did after the doctors messed with him, still able to hear talking in rooms far away, and his other senses remained the same, none of them any better or worse than before. Sabo called himself the most normal of the three, only having his better hearing. Luffy was much better at aiming, only missing occasionally now, and could really pack a punch. He created a few new moves, like weaving his fingers and stretching to make a net, or stretching back both arms for a bazooka, as he called it. He had also unlocked what he called gears. The doctors had been pushing Luffy to do different things, one of them being to try and force his blood and heart to pump and move faster. This was gear second and made Luffy extremely fast. They also had gear third after a doctor mentioned that, since Luffy was rubber and could expand like a balloon, then he could do that with any limb. All in all, it had been eventful. 11,062, 11,097, testing. Harry chirped, entering the cell along with another doctor, taking Ace and Luffy. Sabo could only watch, wondering why just the two were being taken. They reached the lab quickly, but this time they weren't strapped to anything or even pushed into the training room. Instead, Harry placed cuffs around Luffy's wrists, sea stone, and doctors who were mulling around, began uncovering two tanks that had been in the corner of the room, untouched as far as the brothers knew. There were steps leading up to the top of both tanks, and the glass allowed them to see that the inside was empty of anything except water that reached the very top of the tank. Ace and Luffy were pulled along, up the stairs. Ace looked like he wanted to start arguing or fighting, but the sea stone around his wrists made him weak, and he hadn't slept well the night before. Overall, Ace was weak and tired, barely even able to shuffle up the steps, much less work up enough energy to yell. Suddenly the brothers were pushed in, shocking them both as the water immediately made them sink, unable to move their limbs. They both wanted to struggle, Ace looking over at Luffy through the glass, but neither could do a thing. Within minutes the two were out of breath, bubbles shooting from their mouths as the last of their air escaped their lungs, being replaced with salty seawater that burned their noses and throat. As everything began fading there was a pull, and both brothers were pulled from the water, gasping and coughing. Two minutes. Barely acceptable. Again. Hare's voice was stern, a frown on his face. Ace and Luffy were once again unprepared for the push as they landed back into the water, sinking. This continued for hours, the brothers being pushed into, and then pulled back out of, the tanks filled with water. Their record for being in the longest was currently 3 minutes, which was still unacceptable to Hare. He explained that anything under 5 minutes would only result in another dive back in, but nothing the brothers did helped extend their time underwater, before they began to lose consciousness. Their noses and lungs hurt from the water, and the lack of air was giving them headaches, as well as making them dizzy, but they didn't have a say in the matter as they were pushed back in, Ace trying to get a deep breath before the water pulled him in. 3 minutes. Pushed back in. 2 minutes. Pushed. 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Pushed. It was an exhausting test, and Ace saw no end in near for him or Luffy. They were dumped countless more times after, raising their time to 4 minutes, due only to luck and pushing the limits. 
Ace was pretty sure he blacked out during that one before they pulled him out. One more minute you two, and then we can finally move on, Harris said, his excitement returning the closer they got to five minutes. Ace and Luffy took deep breaths, being pushed into the water. They managed to last two minutes before running out of the air and beginning the process of drowning all over again. Ace and Luffy's vision was tinted with black, everything slowly beginning to fade away, but right before they were completely out they were pulled again. The two could only hear the sound of them coughing up all the water, breathing heavily as the black began to fade from their vision. A whole five minutes. Hare's voice drifted to their ears, and Ace could only feel relief at finally being done with that test. Shame, it seems we'll have to start again tomorrow after all. Oh well. Hare said with a sigh, the brothers being lifted from the ground and dragged back to their cell, still dripping wet. The burning sensation hadn't quite left yet, and even though they were breathing heavily, it didn't feel like enough air. They were thrown into their cell where Sabo was sitting, waiting impatiently. He had heard everything so it wasn't a shock to see his brothers soaked and breathing heavily, both still restrained with sea stone. It seemed that they were beginning to believe Luffy's powers were strong enough to start harming them, because the doctors left the cell without removing the cuffs, leaving Luffy in a perpetual state of weakness. ICC called Luffy stammered out, shivering and teeth chattering. The cold of the basement and Luffy soaking wet only made the cold even colder, making Sabo fear he would get sick. Come on Lou. Ace said, gesturing the best he could with shackled hands for Luffy to sit beside him. Luffy nodded, plopping down next to Ace and snuggling into his side, sighing as he felt the warmth of Ace's skin permeate his silk clothing. Even with Seastone on Ace's powers still kept his body temperature above that of a normal human being. That was a weird test. Would they wait four years to start doing it? Sabo asked, more to himself as he sat in front of the two. Ace shrugged, Luffy not even bothering to reply. The knows, they're crazy bastards, that's excuse enough. Ace muttered. Sabo rolled his eyes with a sigh, but agreed with Ace. The doctors were just weird sometimes. Well, anyhow, now you both have to wear sea stone. We should change our sign language so that you don't have to gesture as much. You wouldn't even be able to tell me there's an explosion because your hands are together. Sabo said with a grin. This time Ace rolled his eyes. Yeah, cause I'm gonna need to signal that real soon. Ace said, voice dripping with sarcasm. Hey, you never know. We could do this instead. Sabo said, flicking all of his fingers on both hands a few times. Ace shrugged. Sure, that's fine. This began the long discussion of creating new signs, mostly tapping or flicking to get points across, rather than make big gestures. Luffy joined in so he would know what to signal, and what certain taps meant. I think the Sabo began, tapping his index finger on his leg three times. Should mean, be careful. That way, if we're in a hurry or we're sneaking around we can signal that something might be about to pop up, so we should be on our guard. Sabo suggested. Ace and Luffy nodded, agreeing to the signal and memorizing it for future use. What about when we want to signal that it's all clear? Ace asked. Sabo thought. Well, maybe we could just give a thumbs up, Sabo said. Luffy frowned. But what if I think you mean good job? Luffy asked. Sabo thought about it. You're right well, we could do this. Sabo said, giving a thumbs up, but instead of curling all his fingers, he pointed the pinky out. Luffy brightened. Amen. That way I'll definitely know. Luffy cheered, trying out the signal for himself, and finding it was easy to do quickly. Sabo smiled, Ace shifting to get more comfortable when Luffy moved. Oh, and this could mean, you smell good. Luffy said, giving two thumbs up and scrunching his nose at the same time. Ace and Sobo laughed. You look ridiculous Luffy. Ace said through laughs. Luffy pouted, listening as his brothers laughed. Meanies. He said, wishing he could cross his arms, but found he was unable to with his hands cuffed. Sorry Lu Sabo said, trying to calm himself, still laughing. If it makes you feel better, that can be the signal for you smell good, Sabo said, finally ceasing his laughter, Ace doing the same soon after. Luffy brightened and cheered. Yay. After being in that water Ace does smell a lot better, but you still stink Sabo. Luffy said, smiling at Ace and scrunching his nose up at Sabo who merely smiled. Not all of us had a water adventure today, Sabo said. Ace scoffed. I definitely would not call that an adventure the eldest said, frowning. We could call it Sabo was cut off by a loud booming noise coming from the lab, everyone in the cell screaming in fear. The brothers all sat stock straight, Sabo wincing and covering his ears after the loud boom, plus his heightened hearing, caused him to hear ringing. W what was that Luffy asked in fear, sniffing the air over and over again, like a dog. Ah Sabo. Ace asked, Sabo barely able to hear him over the screaming and the ringing. As yeah, Sabo shouted, trying to get his voice heard. Ace only looked at him, flicking all of his fingers. Explosion. Sabo opened his mouth, about to say something, when the screaming intensified, and Sabo could hear a noise, almost like crackling, coming from the lab. I a small fire Luffy said, Ace barely hearing it, but Sabo picking it up loud and clear. That's what the noise was, a fire. 
Luffy's eyes were wide, Ace and Sabo's as well, as the two oldest moved cautiously to their cell bars, while Luffy stayed in the back, grabbing his hat which he hadn't touched in years, and holding it tightly to his chest. Ace moved in front of Sabo and peered out, having the better sight. The better sight was not needed though, because everyone could see the blazing fire moving rapidly down the hallway, seeping into cells and burning whatever was inside. The screams were deafening, and the brothers could only stare in horror, as they watched children run to the bars, screaming to be let out, fire blazing all around them before they were engulfed. Get back. Ace shouted, shocking Sabo out of his thoughts. He hesitated for only a second before nodding and running to grab Luffy, the three all running to the furthest corner they could, trying to stay away from the fire. The ace as Sabo Luffy shouted in terror, clutching his hat as the smoke billowed into their cell, making it hard to see your breath. Get on the ground and cover your noses with your shirts, they're still wet so they should help a little. Sabo shouted, dropping to the ground and helping Luffy pull his shirt over his nose. They swatched, noticing Sabo didn't have any wet clothes, so he tore a piece of his shirt off, handing it over as he and Luffy dropped to the ground as well. The smoke hurt their eyes and noses, giving them all headaches. I'm scared. Luffy cried out, tears in his eyes, yet they refused to fall. Don't worry Lou, we'll be fine. Sabo said, not quite sure he believed that himself. Be but. We'll be fine. Ace shouted, his voice stern as he stared out their cell where it was getting brighter and hotter. The fire was finally beginning to reach their cell, creeping into the one diagonal to them, and then the one directly in front of them, and then to theirs. They could all only watch as the smoke covered everything, and the fire began coming into their cell, all of them sweating from the immense heat. It's hot. Luffy screamed out, trying to move further away, but only finding the wall. Sabo didn't know what to do and quickly realized that there was nothing that he could do. He grabbed Luffy, pulling the youngest close to him as they listened to the screams, some beginning to go quiet, others just beginning. Some were dead, some were dying. Ace moved in front of the two, glaring daggers at the fire in front of them. Ace. It's gonna be fine. Ace cut Sabo off, turning to look at his brothers, his glare leaving and face softening. We're not gonna let some fire kill us after being trapped here for four years. Ace shouted. Sabo gave him a confused look, but noticed how close the fire had gotten, nearly touching Ace's foot. But Ace, there's nothing we can do. Sabo shouted, hating that it was a simple fact now. Ace scoffed at him, Luffy still trembling in his arms. I've been practicing, remember? Ace asked, the fire finally touching Ace, scaring Sabo and Luffy as they watched with white eyes. Sabo was practically in tears now, realizing these were his final moments. Their final moments. Ace didn't flinch at the fire creeping over him, didn't make a sound, he just let it happen. Ace. Sabo and Luffy both shouted the name as their brother disappeared in the flames. Now the fire was reaching Sabo and Luffy, practically touching their toes. They curled in on themselves as much as they could, Sabo practically crushing Luffy in his grip as the fire finally began crawling over them. But it wasn't hot. Sure, the air around them was scorching, and it was hard to breathe, especially through the wet cloth, but when the fire touched them, it didn't hurt. He looked over to Luffy, the boy's eyes squeezed close with his hat at his chest, but he didn't seem to be in pain. The Luffy? Sabo asked in shock. Luffy peeked an eye open, looking and seeing the fire on them. Ah. It's hot. Hot, hot, hot wait it's not hot. Luffy shouted in confusion, looking at Sabo. They were both equally confused. I don't understand hold on Ace 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 where are you? Yuri Sabo shouted, but didn't dare move in case whatever was keeping the fire from hurting them went away. Luffy seemed to have the same thoughts as he hesitated, moving to get up, but stopping. There was once again nothing that the two could do except sit and hope that everything would be okay in the end. The smell of the smoke was burning their noses, and Luffy was coughing harshly beside him, Sabo holding in his own coughs. As Sabo, Ace is okay, alright Luffy asked, the fear having never left his eyes. Sabo didn't know how to respond, but wanted to believe Ace was fine. After all, they were fine, right? So Ace had to be too. Don't worry Lou, we'll get out of this, all of us, Sabo said, despite his doubts. A tense silence fell over the two, both sitting and doing nothing. There wasn't anything they could do but sit and wait. The screams around them all began to slowly stop until the only thing they could hear was the sound of the fire crackling all around them. This left the two to their thoughts, and Sabo wondered how the two hadn't passed out from lack of oxygen yet. They were breathing in a lot of smoke, regardless if they were breathing through the wet cloth or not, and they were even showing symptoms of smoke inhalation, yet they both seemed to be fine for the time being. Another thing was the fact that they weren't being burned. The fire definitely looked like it was touching them, yet they couldn't feel any of it. Time passed, the fire were eventually beginning to die down. There wasn't much for the fire to burn in the cells, the only thing in them being toilets and concrete, and soon it was small enough that it wasn't overwhelming anymore. They still couldn't see anything from all the smoke, but at least it seemed the fire was stopping. Sabo could hear something down the hall, almost like a whooshing sound, and it gradually got closer, the sound of voices joining the whooshing noise. 
Hey, we're gonna be fine, I hear people, Sabo said to Luffy, mustering a smile for Luffy who grinned back, nodding. They were both hoping that when this was over they would see Ace in front of them, safe and sound. Terminated in here too. On to the next one. No survivors. Have to resupply. Sabo could hear the snippets of conversation, swelling hard at the thought that all the children in the hall had died from the devastating fire. The noises grew closer, and soon the fire was being put out, doctors flooding into the cells surrounding them. When their cell was cleared, the fire simmering into nothing, Sabo scanned quickly. Ace was where he had been when the fire engulfed him, sweating and panting heavily. A few doctors entered the cell and looked at them in shock. Hey, these three survived. Everything began to blur, doctors rushing in, grabbing the brothers, and taking them to the lab that was definitely worse for wear. Everything that used to be a pristine clean white was burnt in black. The chairs were burned to ashes, and the tables, though still there, were blackened as well. All the machines were destroyed, and Sabo was glad that everything had been ruined. The doctors might just rebuild it all and start again, but at least this set them back a bit. You three just don't want to die, huh? Well, that's good news for us I suppose. Hera's familiar voice entered the room as tables were cleared of ash and debris, blankets thrown over them. We should begin immediately. The doctor said, Harry nodding his agreement. Sabo was pretty sure a few days had passed by the time the three were sent back to their cell, which had been cleaned and looked as if nothing had happened. The doctors had worked on them, sticking oxygen masks on them, and trying to reverse the effects that the smoke had had on them. The three had cuffs on the entire time but weren't strapped down, seeing as the straps had been burnt away. Everyone was confused on how the three had survived, Sabo and Luffy especially, and eventually found that it had been Ace who had done it. Due to some drug that he had been given before the fire, he had gotten just enough strength to control the fire, and keep it from burning them. It had left him drained and exhausted by the time the fire had been eradicated, and he had passed out the second the doctors reached them, not waking up until two days later. Now they were in their cell, the hallway absolutely silent. It was unsettling after the constant noise that was in the hallway for the past four years. Everyone else in the hallway had died, as well as two doctors who had been in the lab. Sabo overheard the doctors talking and found out the source of the fire had come from the lab, after the doctors tried creating a new drug. Sabo couldn't even try to feel bad for them. It's weird that it's so silent Sabo said, looking into the hallway. Ace and Luffy remained silent, not replying to the statement. Sabo sighed, turning to look at their cell. Luffy was in the corner, his hat safe and sound at his side, while Ace was sitting near him, knees up to his chest. Wait, Sabo said, horror creeping on his face as he rushed over to the toilet. Don't worry, I kept it safe. Good thing the chalk was there too. Ace said, already knowing what the blonde was thinking. Sabo sighed in relief, spotting the map still taped to the toilet. The chalk is safe too, Luffy asked, spirits rising slightly. Sabo nodded, holding up the few sticks they had left. They had been careful with how much they used the chalk, so that they wouldn't run out. Well this definitely could have been worse, Sabo said softly, remembering how ready he had been to die. We're gonna get out of here. Ace said suddenly, having, for the most part, been silent. Sabo and Luffy stared at him, Luffy nodding slowly, a frown on his face, while Sabo raised an eyebrow. Not like I'm complaining, Sabo said, shrugging and smiling to the eldest. Then we can all be pirates. Luffy said happily. We'll be free. 